pain people order even if you've added everything from this show to your order it's still 295 if you add everything to your order from the designer inspiration show it's been awesome having you with us today thank you so much laura see you in a bit guys and tune in for the designer inspiration now with becky and with Gemma. take care guys bye The fastest way to shop with Jewelry Maker is by going to our website. Just click on the sign up button. Once you've filled in the required details, you can start shopping. You can watch the show by clicking the watch live button on the front page. You can also use our refine tool and narrow down your search. Once you've found an item that you like, just simply click on the buy now button and the item will be added to your basket. Don't forget you can add as many items to your basket per day and still only pay one p and Enjoy shopping with Jewelry Maker. You can now watch clips from Jewelry Maker on our YouTube channel. Get interactive with Jewelry Maker. Owning a strand of genuine gemstones is always exciting, but being able to use it in your handcrafted jewellery, then passing it on to its new owner with proof of its authenticity is even more incredible. Why not add one of our printed authenticity cards to your order for just 50p and share that same feeling with your customers? You can also access online authenticity certificates for items you have previously ordered by looking at your order history on your account details. The certificate gives you valuable information about your purchase and is your guarantee of quality and peace of mind from the Genuine Gemstone Company. If you miss a Jewelry Maker show, then simply go to our YouTube page where you'll be able to find hours of Jewelry Maker footage. Search by show, date or type. Alternatively, search by guest designer by using our playlist page. You can also find hours of tutorials with handy hints and tips to give you inspiration. Our YouTube page is updated on a daily basis so you can access any show at any time. Stay in touch with Jewelry Maker. You can now keep in touch by liking Jewelry Maker UK on Facebook. Get interactive with Jewelry Maker. The Collector's Choice features high caliber gemstones which are prized for their outstanding attributes. They could be examples of rare gemstones, gemstones of pure clarity or exceptional quality. They're all hand faceted by our experienced lapidrists in our cutting houses in the heart of Jaipur. This maximizes the brilliance and luster of the gemstones. The Collector's Choice from Jewelry Maker. Hello everybody, welcome to Design Inspiration. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. My name is Rebecca Reddickin and boy oh boy, have I got some treats. Have you noticed this here, without any jewellery on? How strange. Or maybe it's because we're selling you the elongated busts today this is cracker lacking for you this is going to set off that stand it's going to make your pieces noticeable it is going to create a beautiful professional and elegant look and it's under 10 pounds for you today that's coming up i've got plenty of them so get stuck in if you've got trade shows coming up that is your opportunity i have got Brand new strands times three. Oh, for you today. So many little treats, so many goodies. I've got brand new tool as well. A professional tool used by silversmiths, used by professional jewellery makers, including my jewellery maker today. Our wonderful designer with so much inspiration. You could shake a 
stick at it. It is the wonderful Gemma Crow. Hello, good afternoon. How are you? I'm well now, I'm here, yeah. Good, now you're here. Yeah, I had some trauma this morning. Go on. That's the tyre, and I've got to say a big thanks to all the guys at the Tyre and Battery Centre in Gloucester. They were brilliant. Oh. Fixed me car, sent me on my way, got me here on time. Oh, good, bless <laughs> them. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for getting us, because it would be rubbish with just me, wouldn't it? Um, you have got some gorgeous pieces today. I am, well, we're all blown away. Mm. Give me a little bit of an idea of what to expect because for me, it's nothing I've ever seen before. Um, well, we've got raw copper throughout, so both, both um, inspirations raw copper, and then we've got one of them is wire wrapping, so showing you how the patina on raw copper sort of lifts your wrap, and then one is sheet copper with different textures. And it's raw sheet copper, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. You're going to need some of that to get your hands and use our new tool. Oh my goodness, it's brand spanking new. This is going to, we're going to do a little demo on this, we'll talk you through it. Let's just say, I did my research this morning, I found one of the cheapest ones I could find was around £34. 50 wasn't it? I can't remember now. 34.50. Exact same one. The exact same. Same size, same make, same everything. £34.50. We're no way near that today. Oh my goodness. This is coming up for you. Brand spanking new. We're going to be showing you exactly how to use it, exactly what to do with it in moments. Not long to wait at all. I have got such a beautiful selection of genuine gemstones for you. I've got one of my favourite gems in the world here now. This gorgeous imperial topaz will be coming up for you. I've got brand spanking new strands. Look at this one. I've got to show you this. Oh. Brand new smoky quartz. Ooh. This is a bit of you strand actually. It is. I know exactly what I do with that. Go on. At the moment I've been making lots of sort of um, ladder weave necklaces. Yeah. And the little drops sit perfectly in the little crevice at the bottom of the weave between the two beads. Yeah. So if you're doing and that's graduated already, so that'd be perfect. Oh look how stunning that looks! Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. That is elegant, isn't it? Oh my, oh my days. I've got cabs for you as well. Lots of raw copper coming up. Let's get started, shall we? Brand new tool, bust, gemstones. Oh, there's just so much. Um, say that again, sorry. I was just so in a tizzy. I love that word, tizzy. Good word. Okay. <laughs> Ryan, my director, just went, my mate used to have a dog called Tizzy. Thanks, good. In fact, he actually said my dog used to have a mate called Tizzy, which was weird. Um, I have got beautiful... <laughs> He's just gone, my dogs have friends, what's wrong with that? Um, I have got a beautiful colour palette for you here now. In fact, if I put this together, think of a designer, very notorious for doing bags and homeware. And it's that colour palette, isn't it? You know, the kind of Kath Kidson colour palette? Isn't it? Oof. I adore these. Summer breeze. This is good. It makes me feel fine. Uh, you have got here some beautiful selection of your shell and of your quartz here. Um, I've got... Your light green, oh, hang on, come here, you. Your light green shell pearls, which are just beautiful. It's that dusky colour, isn't it? These are six mil, so perfect for so many different mediums. You've then got here your rose coloured quartz. These are six mil. No, they're not. No, you're on another one. This is your pink quartz, eight mil on these ones. Carrot weight is 160 on this strand. Again, a kind of quite tame, quite a grown up pink actually, isn't it? Still a little bit flirtatious, super feminine, but quite a grown up pink. You've then got a really fresh, fun and funky pink on the quartz here as well. Six mil on these ones, carrot weight on this, 
is 90 carats. And lastly, but by no means leastly, you've got the, so that's your shell, and then you've got the white quartzite, six mil, eight, eight mil, that's not eight mil, six mil, is it? Yeah, they're six. So I'm looking at six mil, eight mil, six mil, six mil, is what we've got on these today. Uh, your price point on this for four strands is absolutely magnificent. £13.80. That's a scorcher, isn't it? It's going under 10. Yesterday was a manic day. We had lots of sellouts of lots of stuff, and this is going to be the same today because this for you is just £8.95. What do you think of that? That's a really good price. Isn't it? That's really good, yeah. That's astonishing because look at the size of these as well. They're huge. They're, I think, to me, this is a really workable colour palette. What do you think, Gemma Crow? I think so. And, yeah, it's reminded me of, um, you, I know you said Kath Kitson, but it's reminded me of the Laura Ashley um, Little Girls Princess Rooms, you know? I know exactly so, what you mean. Even if not in jewellery, but I can imagine those sort of dripping off a lampshade or, you know, something really pretty like that. Yeah, I could just see that working. And actually, because you've got sort of the graduation in the sizes between these, you could do a real eye-catching piece, couldn't you, mm. working with that. Yeah. £8.95 for four strands. How? I don't know. And neither do you. But just get on the phone. Oh, 800 644 6 Five is the number to get in touch with us today uh, and get your hands on this. The code TSGC20, Summer Breeze. Oh, it's nice. Jewelrymaker.com. <laughs> Jewelrymaker. Sorry, I was just winding myself up. Um, Jewelrymaker.com is how you can get into our website. On there it is, uh, you've got the ability to send messages to the studio. And if you do wish to do so, you can. Any questions for Gemma Crow? Uh, such as Gemma Crow. Mm -hmm. Favourite subject at school and why? Um, has to be art or science. Art or science, yeah. why? Well, art, obvious reasons, I love to art. Um, science, I just, I like working out how things work. See, that kind of ties into jewellery making actually, it does, doesn't yeah. it? Problem solving. Problem solving and working out how things go together. Yeah. Well, I like that. Um, if you've got any questions for the wonderful Gemma, get in touch with us. You know she's an absolute legend in her own right and she'll be able to help you out, I'm absolutely sure. Eight pounds and 95 pence for you today. How's about we, oh look, look how pretty. Oh, it's a little choker actually, it'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? I like that. Long neck piece, oh yeah. Oh, in fact, should we do the bust now? This is a beautiful, it's got that velvet feel to it. It's our elongated bust, which is used so, so often by our guest designers. It is your slender, large black velvet bust that we have here. Now, got a question for you. Say, let's have a look, where's, where's that new strand from? There it is, well, I'll show you this one. Have a little look at this. Now, this is a strand, it's beautiful, isn't it? Don't get me wrong, it's very, very pretty. Say this was a ready-made ready, ready -made piece and it was just, say, on your desk or on your trade stall or whatever it might be like that. It looks nice, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful. You could see it if you were up close to your desk or up close to your table. You could sort of see it. From the other side of a hall, and I know a lot of you will be doing your craft shows in, say, sometimes it's outdoorsy, isn't it? It's in a field, it's in a big marquee, sometimes it might be in sort of a church hall or a town hall if you're doing them maybe a little bit more uh, locally to you. You want to be getting people, as soon as they walk through that door, as soon as they walk into that tent, you want people's eyes to be drawn over to your piece. And let's face it, it's not going to be shown off to its best like that, is it? You're going to have to have eyes of a hawk to be able to see that when you're walking in with this into a huge tent with all these people mingling. Eyes of a hawk, you're right. Or binoculars, you're absolutely right. Binoculars too. Um, but even from when you are now, there. 
That genuinely does make all of the difference though, doesn't it? It genuinely, genuinely does. Seeing that, because it's the elongated one, so it is taller, it is higher up, your eye line is already gonna be drawn into this piece, isn't it? Already, 100%. Let me show, oh my gosh, let's get this gorgeous piece, hang on. Your, el your elongated one, oh my gosh, I love this. If you've got the shorter busts as well, Sometimes they just don't fit your pieces on, do they? And for something like this design, let me get a shorter bust, actually. Here's a shorter one. So this is a shorter bust, isn't it? So it's still elongated, but it is the shorter one. If I was to hang this neck piece on there, it's just skimming the desk. It's not looking, it's a gorgeous piece, obviously, but it's not showing off to its full potential, is it? As soon as you've got it on this really, really long bust, it's suspended. It gives you the impression of where this would sit on the body better, doesn't it? Because this, of course, you know, it is in the shape. It's the same shape. It's tapered off to the end. But it is much smaller. This isn't to replicate the décolletage, the size of a human. This one is much more like you can actually see can't you in proportion it's much more in proportion which means someone can see this from the other side of the room they can see that it's a similar shape and size to them and they know that that is going to be resting in the exact place pretty much that it is on the bust already that therefore is putting little kind of messages into their mind of I can see myself wearing that now I can see how that would look on me without even trying it on, without even trying. Now, there's lots of you multi-buying this. What I will say is congratulations, Christine, who's got yourself three. Uh, power of three, we always say, don't we, when it's selling, when it is um, pieces and looks on your stand because it can look beautiful with three. We always say, don't we, when we're jewelry making, a lot of the time it's nice to work in odd numbers. So a lot of the time guest designers will do five petaled flowers, etc. right? Because it's nice to the eye. If you do want to multi-buy on this, why not get yourself three today? Because the power of three truly to draw the eye in is just beautiful, especially on these elongated pieces. Your price is under £10, your price today is just £8.95 pence for you. Absolutely sensational price. Because let's face it, if this piece was just resting on your table, on your desk, I'm sure you'd still sell it because it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous piece. But it would purely be for the people really, really close up to your table, to your stall. However, when this is on a bust, already your perceived value will go up of that piece. Already the price that you're thinking for this piece has gone up in your own mind. Because it's like with anything, isn't it? I always think it's like when you go into those, um, how many have I got left, sorry love? Oh, I've still got a decent enough quantity, but I've got probably about 40 or 50 gone already actually, haven't I? Maybe even more. Um, yeah, I always think it's like, you know when you walk into the really posh like jewellery stores and you have some of the jewellery will be on the side, won't it? And you can have a little shimmy around and you have a little look. But then, you don't have to shimmy, you can just walk around those shops. And, um, and then you see a piece in the glass cabinet, don't you? And then you, have, you sort of look at it and you slightly drool over it and oh my gosh, that looks gorgeous. And then you have to go and ask someone to get the key, the key to the cabinet. You know what I mean. You feel a little bit posh walking behind them like, you can have that on the side. I want the cabinet goodies. It's like that, isn't it? And then they open the cabinet and oh, you feel all luxurious and then you get to try it on. That's what this will do for you on your stand. Because if this is here, that means it's less likely that people will be, you know, just having a look at it, putting it down, having a look at it, getting the fingers all over it. If something's on the stand, someone's going to be asking, do you mind if I try that on? Is, is that all right? And you're going to give them that same feeling. Yeah, of course you can. You're getting the talking happening then. You're, you're conversing. You've opened up the dialogue, which means then you're more than likely to make a sale. All of that feeling, all of that luxury, all of that boosting the perceived value of your own pieces for just $8.95, you can't argue with that at all, can you? You really, really cannot. Congratulations, loads of multi-buyers. Maybe even more multi-buyers than single buyers. Your names have gone off my screen. 
I can't say hello to you all, sorry. But uh, thank you very much for joining us today and congratulations for getting your hands on this. And you know what? It's not just for people with stalls, is it? Have you ever made something that you're just really, really proud of and you just really, really like it and you kind of just want to show it off a little bit? How gorgeous would it be to just have these lined up in your living room, almost like as an art piece, almost as your own little d decoration, or even just your dressing table? Have you ever had one of those like necklaces and you put them in your jewellery box and they'll become all tangled and stuff, don't they? It's such a pain, or they scuff or whatever. Having it on here, you're not going to have that issue, are you? It's just going to be there in the morning when you wake up, when you've got that special event. It's on your dressing table. You know you can put it on and you can absolutely adore and enjoy it. Jem, you've obviously got display busts as well. What do you use them for? I'm presuming lots of photo taking. Yeah, lots of photo taking. But also, you know, if I'm making a collection, mm. I want to see what... If, say, I'm working from a kit and I'm making a collection from one kit, I like to have them set up mm. in front of me while I work so that I know I'm either not going to replicate a design or I'm going to take the elements from that one that is, you know, I can then echo it in the next piece. So just having the range you're working on set up for you to see, even in that sense, is, you know, you have to have them out displayed for your own benefit. Definitely mm. do, definitely, because it does it all. It, and that can help your mojo, I presume, as Absolutely. well. Yeah, definitely. And I always keep my favourite pieces out on the side for a couple of weeks. And, you know, I've got mannequins that I hang things on as well. Yeah. But yeah, they're right all around me all the time. And sometimes, I know, because I'm one of those people that sometimes I can feel quite creative, but then I'll make something and I don't quite know how to finish it off. I'm like, oh. Yeah. If you put it on a bust, you can kind of keep looking at it and go back to it and something, one time, might just click, that's what it needs. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I needed there. And the other thing is, our, most of our customers as crafters are our friends and family. So if when they come around for a cup of coffee, if they can see your new things out, you know, you might get a commission. Absolutely or true. You, or you might know what you're going to give them for their birthday or Christmas. Absolutely, because they, they like notice it and they comment on it. Mm. It is such a wonderful, wonderful piece. Congratulations for getting your hands on this. Whether it's for you, whether it's a gift, whether it's for your stall, just your house, or just for your website. You want your pieces to look really professional when you're taking a picture of them. This is for you. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. £8.95, your black velvet display bus, the elongated bus. Loads of you get in it. Get it quickly whilst you can because when we get things like this in you know that they fly out as quick as anything don't they they always <laughs> do i l z x o six few left but not too many get your hands on it now whilst you can say it to me again love oh you ready for getting Tooley. Tooley, yeah I'm yeah ready for whoa <laughs> i oh her throwing bits about i have got for you here a brand new tool. I told you, thanks Ben. I told you that it would not uh, be a long wait to get your hands on this. It is our disc cutting set. Now it'll come in your little plastic box, but I'll move it out of the way just so I can show you it properly. I'm gonna show you exactly how to use this. Take a little look around it. I'll briefly discuss what this is for. So you have your different sizes in here. So these are in inches. So for example, you've got your quarter inch, you've got your half inch, you've got all of these different sizes. It's half inch, um, nine by six, five by eight, seven by 16, three by eight, five by 16, and a quarter, one by four, as well on these. Now, we're doing a demo of this now, aren't we? Yeah, we are, yeah, yeah, sorry, I was just double checking, because uh, Gem's already set up and ready. Um, now, this is such a wonderful tool, it truly, truly is. Each one of these will come out separately, so we'll be able to see these are removable. Now in here, if I turn it this way, you've got your little lip. So that is where you will be putting in your sheet metal. So I've got that raw copper sheet metal coming up for you in a little bit. Um, but I've also, of course, if you've got your aluminium at home or whatever else you might be working with, you will be slicing these discs into this. Now, this is used by silversmiths. Hannah Oxbury has got one of these. Gem, you've got one of these, haven't you? Yeah, I have, yeah. Now, 
you were talking about this before. Tell me about the one that you've got at home. It's not exactly the same, is no, it? No, it's not, not exactly the same. I've different got sizes? Four cutters, no different sizes. So yours yeah. are four, this is seven? Yeah. So tell me about when you got yours, why you got it, and the price you got it at. Well, I got mine when I first started um, creating jewellery with scrap. So I was using cans and things and cutting them out. And I was desperate to be able to cut uniform circles without using my shears. Mm. Um, so I, I wanted to get one, but they are so expensive. Um, I think in the end, I was absolutely over the moon to find one that was 39.99, 10 pound postage. And that was a really good price. That was about three years, four years ago. Um, yeah, so, and, it, and, it's, and it's good. It, you know, it does, does a job. It's not as sharp as this one after using this one today. Is it not? No. And yours just got four sizes? Yes. This has got seven? Yeah. So, yours was four sizes. The price of yours was? Thirty nine ninety five and, and you ten pound postage and ten pound postage on top of that. Don't yeah. forget only two ninety five for the whole day. We did our research earlier on. Do you mind getting that up for me again, love? We'll do the research for you. Okay, we'll do your live research for you. We're typing in this exact same one. We have found prices for you. We have found what prices? Thirty four pound fifty on one website. 34 30 on another one 38 pounds on the nose on another website this is the exact same product the exact same make the exact same size that we're doing live live research for you now 31 pounds we've just found one for 39 pounds as well i'm about to beat all of those prices beat them Gemma Crow bought a full hole punch and obviously you did your research I because did. you're not going to be add on prices obviously and no. especially for a professional tool like this. Um, you got yours four holes for 39.99 yeah for four. I've got seven here. Your price today. Wow. 19 pounds and 95 pence. I have just done live on the spot. My producer, Helena, has just done live on the spot web price comparisons. She typed in this exact information, exactly the same brand and the cheapest one we can find of exactly the same, no difference, 31 pounds. This is 19 pounds and 95 pence for us today that is astonishing the names have gone on my screen two times over i've got about 30 in the basket checking out those baskets because it's a brand new tool and what happens when we get something in brand spanking new we don't buy too many because we don't want to buy 300 of something bring it to you and you should just hate it that would be ridiculous so we buy in small quantities if you want it you have to get it now, this is not a drill, 19 pounds and 95 pence. This is actually gonna be set as Gemma's challenge as well. I'm gonna go over to Gemma now and we'll have a demo with this. Get yourself on the phone right now, not a drill. Um, this is gonna be given as a challenge as well. So we'll show you a little bit of how to use this, but then later on we will, um, we will show the pieces that Gemma has made at about, about quarters to five-ish. Oh, it's exciting challenge it is exciting. this actually. I, isn't I it? didn't even know we were getting it in. I know. If we did, if I'd known, I could have done something for the designer inspiration, but I'm sure that will come anyway. Definitely. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. I could not actually believe how much easier it is than mine. And yours was the thirty nine ninety yeah. nine ten pound postage package. Yeah, and the, the metal I've been using before with my cutters is actually thinner than this. Um, gauge that we're using here this is a one mil what I've been using is 0 0.8 0 0.6 at home so this yes. sheet of the raw copper as well is coming up in your second designer inspiration so yes. stay tuned yeah for that. I'm just using this it's a bit that actually has been photographed the templates for the projects on so I'm just going to use the corners okay and um, when you lift this up these these do come through yeah they're a bit like um you know when you're a kid and you have those little things that you hammer you. the blocks through, <laughs> through. yeah <laughs> so it's a bit like that so don't be surprised you lift it out of the pack and they all fall out that's how what's that's how it's meant to or else you won't be able to slot the that's it. through the sheet through would you so if you can see I'm, I'm just going to pop my block um in between my towel here because i don't want to make too much noise but i do want to absorb it a little bit okay um if you have a look at these you've got a narrow end and a 
uh, sort of wider end yeah. and it's very flat on that end and rounded this end. Well, this end is the end you hammer. Never hammer that end. No. Because y this is going to cut your metal. Okay. So you really don't want to be getting any um, dinks on the end on the sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to use, I'll use the larger one. And the thing is, this is obviously cutting through the metal, but <coughs> these aren't actually. No, they're not sharp. Sharp no, at all. Look, they're not sharp. Not but they even slightly sharp. But they it's just the shape and it's the way it's designed that kind yeah. of will do it with pressure really isn't it? It is yeah it, it is literally what it is it's a it's a punch it's a punch cutter yeah some people call them die cutters it's but also punch okay okay so what you do is you've got this slit down the side of so it's this section here. yeah yeah so in there you slot your sheet of metal mm -hmm. whatever you're going to cut and you just just literally slot it in and then you find the appropriate hole for the cutter that you're using and pop it in to the hole yeah okay and apply pressure downwards because if you allow this to jump around too much you're going to get sort of um, little trace marks around the edge of your circle so I you see. try not to okay and then use um, a hammer um, I would actually recommend just a household hammer mm. rather than using your your jewelry making tools this hammer I use for texture because um, when you click when you work on here you're going to get little textures in the in your hammer head so um, you wouldn't want to use this for flattening after. Oh, great, oh, that's so, good. So you've got one for texture and one for actual. Yeah. Normal so a, a household hammer actually is is what you need. So you don't even need a special hammer or anything. Brilliant. Um, and then we just give it a good firm whack a few times, and you'll feel it punch through. I actually think I heard that. It's kind of a bit of a clunk. Yeah, you hear it? you feel you feel it come through. So then you keep you keep pushing, hammering you can down. Hear that change, can't you? Okay. And then that has punched through a perfect little disc, perfect little circle. Wow. Okay. Now that is perfect. It is perfect. It, it is perfect. There's no little dings on it or no. scrapes or bruises, no. as it were. No. And it is perfect, which we all know. Yep. I think, this is going to sound really stupid, I think a circle is the hardest shape to do. It's the hardest shape to create because even with a heart, if it's slightly wonky, it looks a bit whimsical and cute. Yeah. A circle. Circle. It's the hardest it's the hardest shape to cut without um you know with shears or a saw because yeah. it has to be perfect. Yes, you're right. Because otherwise your eye draws to it, doesn't it? If if your circle's even slightly off, I always find that with crafting, card making yeah. and everything. If you're cutting out and it's slightly off, your eyes drawn time and time That's again. It. If you're going to invest in any dye, it's always a, a circle. Mm. Um, let me just show you the next thing because you might get to this point and think, "Oh, I'm stuck." Because obviously now this is like a rivet popping through of the course. metal. Yeah, yeah. So we need it to. It's coming out this side, and we need it to come right through. Yeah. Um, and we've got that narrower part, which will then allow it to slip through the metal. I see. Yeah. So um, you can either tip it upside down and sort of bash down until it comes through, which is generally what I do. So you just oh, yeah. bash down until it comes through. Oh, because it gets or, to that thin a bit, doesn't it? So it'll just slip out. Or then. you can pop it on the edge of your block. Yeah. And whack it through. And then and it's then through. It'll just slide through. And then you can remove your sheet of metal. But either, either way, it's up to you. It's, it's not difficult anyway, but it, you know, it, because of the, um, it needs to fit very snugly in there to make a good cut. So, of course. you know, it's going to... Because otherwise it'd be sort be of snug. wonky, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's right. Otherwise it'd move around, you get a, a dodgy edge. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, we're coming over to you in a little bit to see how to do, uh, how to make this into a beautiful, inspirational piece. Mm -hmm. So, we will be back with the lovely Gemma Quo in a little bit. Do you love this tool, though, genuinely? I absolutely love this tool. Really? I love it, yeah. I wouldn't be without mine and I and I will get this one because mine doesn't have these little ones. And that could be quite handy actually, couldn't it? Yeah, well do you know what, they just make great um, saucer beads even. Yeah. So just to put, pop in it where you might usually put a jump ring, yeah. you're going to put, you know, make this little um, quarter inch hole and pop a, pop a hole in the middle of that and then you've got gorgeous little spaces. Um, do you know what I'm thinking as well? Just these here, yeah. doing one of each, little jump ring between them. Gorgeous, it's just a pair of earrings. A pair of earrings, or a a pendant. pendant. Because you could um, match a pendant but start with the larger ones, yeah. couldn't you? And these, I mean, these are a great size for doing little initials all the way around your wrist. Oh my gosh, Names. you're so right. Yeah, the, I mean, it, perfect. There. Oh, I absolutely adore this. Do treat yourself to it now. Guys with it in your baskets, please, please do check out. I can't tell you how important this is at this point. 
um, 19 pounds and 95 pence for you today iogc45 that is your code happy with that very happy with hey, that hey if you've got what's that you know what i mean is it like a doming doming block doming block yes yeah, then, then, then you just pop these in the dome and block, use your ball pine hammer and hammer away, and you're going to get a lovely curved, which is what I would do. It makes them look finished. Gorgeous, like a dome. Oh, I love yeah. so many ideas. Congratulations, everyone who is getting these. Lady Sheila. She, how do I say that? Lady Sheila. I think that is Shayla. Shayla. And I think that is the lovely Shayla that comes to some of our BB meets <gasps> in Gross Gloucester. Ooh. Yeah. Lady Shayla. Yeah. I like that. She's a lovely lady, very <laughs> talented. Is she an actual lady? Like lady lady? No. Royal? No. No. <laughs> Well, she might be. She might be hiding it from us all this time. Maybe. Well, you're <laughs> outed now. Um, thank you, everyone who's getting your hands on it. I'll be back with you in a little bit. Okay. Now, I am with the wonderful Gemma Crow up until five o'clock, and I have got lots of different designer inspirations for you coming up. Um, I've got those brand new strands coming up. I have got my Imperial Topaz. I've got price drops coming up for you on my favourite gemstone. I'm sorry, I'm just like getting a tension headache because I know the price we're going to on it, which is just stupid, uh, but I love it. Um, I've got so many goodies coming up for you today. If you want to get your hands on the sheet of the raw aluminium, that's in my second designer inspiration today. But if you want to get involved with the raw wire itself in the wire wrapping, then you absolutely can for the first designer inspiration. Now, your wire itself, the raw wire that we're going to be working on. <laughs> You're right there, Gem. I can't do it in here. I'll finish this one and then I'll do it in the break. All right, go on. Okay. Sorted. It's quite good. That, Almost. Quite good, that. Um, that is going to be a challenge today. And my challenge is talking over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have got lots and lots of goodies for you today. If you want to get your hands on the raw copper, it's very, very rare that we have it. In fact, I think this is the only second time I've seen it. I've definitely not the sh seen the sheet of it myself before. Raw copper is spectacular because you can do so much with it. We're going to be showing you how to patina with it today. We're going to be talking you through not only how to work it um, as a wire wrap itself, because obviously it has a very different feel, but we will also be showing you how to colour it. Pete, will you do me a huge favour, sweet Pete? Can you pass me, now that Gemma's walked out, so I can show you. She's gone to get some. Will you just nick me one of them, mate? No, 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 the, the necklace, necklace. We'll show you it dead quick. We'll show you it dead, dead quick. And then stay there, because I'll put it back. I'll put it back before Gemma gets back. This is what, wait, is it this one? We're going to be learning how to make this one today. Oh, look, 3D. But look, this is patinaed. This is the same wire. So you can do it raw, but then you can patina it, which we're going to show you how to make. Pete, Pete, give me the other one, Pete quick before she gets back. Don't know where she's gone. Gone to get water, I think. Look at this one. Oh my gosh. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is the raw copper and then that is, oh Laura Binding's looking at me now like sneaking. Not doing anything. Um, you've got, this is your patinaed. We got through, she's coming back. Pete, Pete, quick, Pete. Do, do, do. So we've got here for you uh, three of these gorgeous, gorgeous. You're right, Gem. We cannot wait to see your pieces, honestly. We are so looking forward. Um, I have got your three wires here. So this is your raw copper. 10 meters you're getting. You've got the 0.4, the 0.6, and the 0.8. Now, tell me about this copper and why it's so different to work with lovely Gemma Crow. Um, when it's had no, apart from being formed into wire, it's had no processing, so it's really soft, which is, you know, a, a really nice bonus because if you um, you can work with higher gauges and it's much easier yeah um, and two it allows you you can keep it as that raw copper look if you want and varnish 
varnish it so that it stays um, just looking as coppery as, as copper, that. Yeah. Or you can colour it. Various techniques for colouring copper. You can patina it. You can um, you can heat polish it. You um, create lovely patterns with heat. Very random patterns. But the, it just offers you so much versatility. And I do think it makes your jewellery look authentic. Do you know Definitely. what I mean? Definitely. I, I know exactly what you mean. Like you've crafted it start to finish. I, and I do love that about about raw raw materials like this. I love that. It is such a ridiculous price drop I'll go into on this. Now, this is your raw wire. You've got 10 meters of each. Let's reiterate 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8 on those. I've then got your cabs. So when we have a look at Gemma's, you'll see that each of the two designs have used a cab in them. How are these cabs to work with? Um, a pear drop shape, I'd say, is probably the easiest if you're starting out working with cabochons. Good. So um, great to start off this one. So you've got something in there that's sort of um, easy to start with, and then the heart shape may be a little bit more challenging, which is nice because it great. offers you some progression. But a black heart, you can't beat a black heart shape. No. Just perfect. It's wonderful, isn't it? It really, truly, truly is exceptional. Now, these are, of course, your agates. I love the jet heart. That is gorgeous, isn't it? Really, really beautiful. Um, so you have got your red agate, 40 carats. This is 30 by 40 by 30 mil. And then you've got your black, which is uh, your black agate heart, which is 34 mil. 50 carats worth on there. I love the luster of a black agate. It's just, oh, I don't know, it's just really captivating, isn't it? It truly, truly is. Um, I've not actually seen this heart shape before. It's beautiful though, isn't it? It's a, yeah, it's a quite a stylish, um, subtle heart. You're right, you're I absolutely like that right. It. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I love, and people at home will see shortly, that you've almost exaggerated the shape of the heart with your design, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, I think that's where the inspiration came from. I started with the heart and sort of built onto it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just a lovely shape. It Regardless beautiful. of it being a heart, it's a nice shape to work with. Absolutely gorgeous. I've then got your strands. Now, these strands are exceptional. How did you find working with this little beauty? Oh, it's gorgeous. I separated them all out into different colours. Um, and I've not, you know, I've used nowhere near half of them in these designs. So, you know, I've got them then to use in other projects, in other colourways. Multicoloured rice pearls, four by six mil on these. Gosh, they're beautiful. Those colours as well, though it's multicolour, it's not totally and absolutely over the top, you know, neon bright, is it? They're no. all very workable colours. That's right. And although they look like they heavily contrast because they're separated in such a way on the strand, yeah. when you um, separate the colours and have little piles, you can actually graduate the colours almost oh, so they gorgeous. you know, go from right from the, the cream right into the gold, the pinks and then the golds and then the browns and then the blacks. So you can actually graduate them so they don't look quite so contrasting. Gorgeous. A lovely strand. Oh, I love that. I really appreciate this strand so much. And um, you've then got these beautiful, beautiful drops. Wowzers. That'd go nicely with that Imperial Topaz I've got later, actually. I think. Ooh, yeah. Oh, look at those. This is your black agate again, so working perfectly with the luster of that heart cab. You've got 200 carats worth on these. Each one is the same size. It's 30 by 10 mil. I love an elongated drop because you can really simply create a look, just popping a head pin through and you've got the drop look, or you can use it as you have mm. and strand it in different directions. You can create a really different look with it, can't you? And actually, I like the way that you've used it because it's almost like an arrow it drawing exactly. your eye. Yeah, it's a taper and anything that tapers allows you to lead the eye somewhere. So that's why I love drops. Absolutely beautiful. They are really eye-catching, aren't they? Mm, um, as well as this, you are going to be getting your faceted rounds. <sighs> Seductively sparkly or what? Wow. You know what? I will just do this as a necklace, pop on a head pin and drop these sort of 
kind of slightly sporadically, to be honest. Really, really easy. I'd probably be able to do it in about five minutes, but I think it'd be so eye-catching. Night out glamour, that would be, wouldn't it? Um, so you've got your rounds here, of course, your faceted rounds. They are so beautiful. I absolutely adore them. Um, six mil on these. You've got 80 carats worth of that black agate there. Sparkly, sparkly, twinkle, twinkle. And lastly, but by no means leastly. Okay, so. We've already had pearls in this. We've already had your raw copper. Pearls, wow, you know, extraordinary, gorgeous, beautiful. Surely it can't even get better than that. And now you're just whacking a strand of garnet. Rhodonite garnet. Oh my goodness, this is one of the most extraordinary gemstones in the world. The history that's just enveloping this gem is spectacular. Now to you these will look relatively dark and that's purely because the lights um, on this is, is quite intense. But to me, every single one's got beautiful clarity. You've almost actually got ruby reds running through here. You really, really have cinnamon tones as well. You're getting a lot of. Where night garnet is just a rarity of all rares. It truly, if, if that makes sense. <laughs> rarity of rares. Um, it's really rare, is what I'm trying to say. It is so unusual to be able to find such an amount that are just working so perfectly together. The colour of these is like seamless throughout the strand. It really is every single one of them mimicking the next. It's so beautiful. 60 carats worth we have of your irregular plane drops. And these are four by two by eight by three on a 30 centimetre strand. Such a stunning gemstone. Real one for the connoisseurs, this. It really, really is. So I've got stunning garnets. I have got the number one organic of the season with your pearls. I have got a seriously elegant, elongated drop, which actually would look gorgeous on those busts, wouldn't it? Almost oh, stunning. And then I've got your seductively sparkly agate in the six mil rounds. And pairing all of that with two cabochons. Now, we all know the price of cabochons everywhere else apart from here, don't we? I always say, I that very well-known store, um, I've seen an agate. Oh, so actually same as this. Oh yeah, of course. I've seen an agate cab. Same size. Same size as this one, different shape. Mine's the oval, the one that I saw. 17 pounds and 95 pence in that ridiculously well-known Massive, massive craft shop. That huge one. $17.95! I know. How do they sell any? Who knows? Who knows? I suppose if you've not found jewelry maker, you might think that's a really good price. And I'll be honest, I thought it was a pretty good price when I first saw it. Um, and then you've got your 30 meters worth of your raw copper, beautiful wire, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, and your 8 mil. All of this should be. That's a cracking deal, actually. Because if you're thinking of those cabs and you're thinking 17.99 or 17.95, whatever they were each, you'd be hitting up that number anyway, wouldn't you? The price today is about to go loco. Everyone pays the same price, even those people who have already checked out their basket. How do you feel about 10 pounds off? 21 pounds and 95 pence 10 pounds off this is a corker isn't it that is an astonishing astonishing price point that is amazing there's like 30 of you with it in your baskets please check out well done pamela in cheshire your little love maureen in cumbria oh you're up my neck of the woods both of you um 21.95 that is astonishing. You, you couldn't buy rhodonite garnet at that price, generally. You couldn't buy this one strand, generally, at that price. How are we doing this then? I don't know. <laughs> I, I probably should, but I don't. 
What have you been seeing recently on designer inspirations? I know I did a couple the other week and I did a six pound saving on one, which is astonishing. I know I did around an eight pound saving on one. 10 pounds off this is a wonderment, isn't it? There's loads of you. How many have I got of this, love? I've got 150, but I've already got 40 gone with about 30 in baskets. Oh, in fact, more than that, I've just been told. My basket screen's being a bit funny. I only get to see half of them. I think there's one next to it. So I'm looking at more like 40 in baskets. So essentially, I'm in double figures on this now. When you see gorgeous Gemma's designs, there's gonna be even more of you on the phone. So do check out um, 0800 655. And if you wanna get your hands on that, with 10 pounds off and you want to create these beautiful pieces mm -hmm. now's the opportunity was it fun to work with i always love working with raw copper and i always love wire but yeah the i love the black element in it. it's really lifted it made it quite high end looking i think i think you're absolutely love, right love it absolutely love this kit phenomenal price are you chuffed with that price because is. this is a very important question and i know the answer already because you told me before how much would we sell the one we're going to be looking at today for Around, I'd say around the 60, 65 pound mark. Obviously, it depends on where you're selling it. Yeah, yeah. But around the 65 pound mark for this one. Because <laughs> you've got pearls, you've got road night garnet, you've got a cab, agate cab, and let's face it, it's just flipping beautiful. So you easily yeah. can charge that price for it. Look at that 3D effect. That is amazing. 21.95 is your price on this today. It is stunning. Lady luxury. Very luxury. It's so yeah. luxurious, isn't it? Uh, check out your baskets because I've probably got about, I've probably got about, um, how many left? There's loads of you with it in your baskets. I've only got 50 left, is that it? That's not a lot at all. That is not a lot at all. 21 pounds and 95 pence and you could sell this one. Yeah. I think uh, 60 pounds is a very good price mark on something like that. That is amazing. Your names have gone off my screen twice. There's actually no more space to fit on any more names on my screen. Genuinely astonishing. Loads in web baskets. I can't get over it. Look at this one as well. How gorgeous is that? And you've said it yourself. Mm. You obviously are a wire worker, but you I don't think I've actually seen you weaving that much before. Well, no, I don't. I generally, I, I, you know, I generally steer clear really of, of it. It's not because I generally do big and bold. Yes. So I, I think I've done big and bold pendants, but there's weaving in there, which is unusual for me. However, weaving with raw copper when you patina it gives you such a beautiful effect that you know I, I do like it. Yeah, it is stunning. One thing that I think is beautiful about this as well is, even if you two aren't a weaver, you've done something that you don't actually have to be, no. but is so stand out. Yeah. So even if you're not into cab wrapping or weaving, look at how simple but stunning these are. And I imagine someone really new to jewelry making could yeah, make that. Yeah, it's very simple. And like I said, that the wire is so soft that 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 job is so easy and not hard on your fingers it just wraps around beautifully just it does exactly as it's told that's what's so nice about the raw copper <laughs> really that. easy to work with wonderful let's get started you lovely lady okay right it is easy to work with but it is a bit grubby okay because um, copper because it's not coated or anything is naturally patinering all the time yes just course. just by just being, being in the air out. yeah um, so I tend to keep mine in an airtight tub just to try and limit that process when Fair. I keep it. But of Good course, this has been in warehouses and you know, from, got shipped from here, there and everywhere. So when you work, when you soften it, so when you pull it through your fingers to soften the wire or straighten it, you're gonna get black lines. So my hands are really grubby today mm -hmm. because I've you know, got black lines. And you'll see as I go through the demo, it's marking me. It just washes off. It's a, it's a patina that will just wash There's off. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's not gonna damage no, your skin or anything. No, in fact, it's just the nature of the, the natural copper isn't it in fact you know I'm, I don't, I'm not sure I'm supposed to advocate but copper's got so many properties you know even recommended in the medical world the western medical world that's well, good for you because people wear it as bracelets to like for balance and just travel sickness and yeah, stuff like and that yeah blood don't flow it, so. and things like that it's yeah. really good for joints and arthritis 
so it's said, and I'm not allowed to say it. But no, 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 but, but we, we know what you mean. I'm you can sure look you've online and find in, in shops. You know, properties of copper, and it's been used right through the ages for all sorts of things, antiseptic, um, all sorts. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? It really, um, really is. And in terms of um, gemstone energies and things, if people believe um, or like that side of the metaphysical side of gemstone, um, copper is supposed to be a really good conductor of those energies. Oh, really? So, yeah, a lot of people oh, wow. buy from me and ask me not to, not to um, varnish. Um, because they don't want, they want, they want the, the copper, you know, for its energies and its properties. So. That's amazing, isn't it? So yeah, always check with your customer if you're selling on if they actually want it coated or not. Oh, that's a really good tip. Thanks for that, Joe. Right. Just to let you know that I've not got many of this left now. I'm sorry because I've had a ten pound discount. It's raw copper, which we hardly ever see, and when we do see it, it's very rarely discounted. You've got those pearls. You've got the garnet. You've got these gorgeous pieces with your two cabs. 30 meters worth of that raw copper and once everyone checks out their baskets and we're going to be in last chance saloon we're going to be in last chance saloon once everybody checks out easy peasy uh, so do so now please not a drill i don't want you all to miss out 21.95 fab right so we're going to make the pendant um that i'm going to use the oval pendant and then you can use the same it's exactly the pear the shape yeah mm -hmm. the pear sorry and um, the teardrop or pear shape and it's exactly the same technique um, on the um, black heart. So I would say start with the pear shape because it is slightly easier to get the shape, um, but then move on to the heart with the same technique if you want to. Okay. Um, so I'm starting with the length of um, the 0 0.8 um, wire first, mm -hmm. and I'm going to create a series of, um, what do we call them, prongs okay. to set our gemstone in. So how I'm going to do that is, Take my flat nose pliers and go, let's start in the center ish of the wire. So, this length of wire should be around 50 centimeters to start with. Mm -hmm. This one needs to be a bit longer than the others because obviously we're going to make lots of um, little prongs in it. Okay. So, either side of your, one side of your pliers just push directly upwards. And if you see, I pushed against my pliers rather than bending my wrist mm -hmm. because. If I bend my wrist, I get a curve, and if I push against my pliers, I get a corner. That's good. That's and it's good. a corner I want, okay? okay. So then um, it's about 1.2 um, centimetres or 12 millimetres along that little um, upward section. You then put your pliers in, and at the tip, again, push against the pliers. Don't double it all the way around, because we don't want the shape of the tip of the pliers in there. We just want the bend, and then what we're going to do is Pull it down so that it's parallel, and then squeeze in the teeth of your pliers that tip together, so it's like mm -hmm. so it's like a little prong. Okay. Okay. And then we'll go go to um, to get it exactly the same so that it all lies in a line. If you allow the wires just to cross over while you hold them in your pliers, mm -hmm. then we, you know when you bend this one down, it's going to be in exactly the same place, not going to be staggered. Good tip. So if we bend that one now back flat. So what we've got is one little prong. Can we see that very yeah. clearly? One little prong there. Fab. Okay, so the next one we do, we want to face the other way, because remember we need to, is a cabochon, so we need something to support it at the back of the curl and something and to support it at the front. Okay. So this time I use my pliers to measure because it makes life easy and you don't have to keep getting the, the, pen, the um, ruler out. Right. Right. So I'm using actually the width of my pliers as my, as my gauge. Mm -hmm. So I butt my pliers up against the tooth I've just made or the um, prong I've just made grip onto the wire and this time instead of going downwards with the prong I'm going to go upwards okay so up straight up and then again about 12 millimeters along put my pliers in and then push down fold it so that it's parallel and then squeeze the tip with your it's another great thing about this raw copper actually because sometimes when you're doing these prongs with the coloured wire you can scuff it can't you you can yeah and, we, and we've got some great bending pliers that you can use but yes. um, still there is any. there is that um, risk of chipping the colour okay so again pop the, the teeth the prongs together and then bend up against up against the pliers and then so we've got one prong one way and one prong the other Okay, and for this design we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen prongs in total. Okay. Okay, am I gonna do a couple? Thirteen more? on each side. No. Thirteen in total. Thirteen in total. Alternating. So six yeah. on one side, seven on another. 
Yeah, so they're going to alternate. So I'm just going to do a couple because this is the one I'm going to demonstrate the weave on. Okay, fab. Okay, so I'll just do a few more. Just whilst you're doing those, I yeah. need to let you know that people have missed out now. Oh. People are starting to miss out now. Um, Surrey, Shame. Merseyside, Hertfordshire, Hampshire, County Durham, Northamptonshire, Wiltshire, Derbyshire, uh, Larkinshire, Northampton, Tyne and Weir, Cheshire, Nottingham, Gloucestershire, uh, Carmarthen, Greater London. That's only part of my list of people with it in their basket. I've only got half of the list because the other half goes off my screen. That's just half of the people with it in their baskets. And you've started missing out now because I've had telephone bidders coming in. Well done, thank you very much, Zena. You've just checked out, you're a little love. And Linda, thank you for checking out. Um, people who are coming in on the phones are taking out of baskets now, so people are missing out right now. Fastest fingers first, just, just click the checkout button. Sometimes it's fine to relax with things in your baskets when we've got a lot of them, because you can just wait till you've got a few things and then check out. But this is going to be a sellout and people are missing out on it now. So just, it only takes a couple of seconds to check out, doesn't it? So you may as well do it now. Okay, so I've got, got, I've got enough in here now to start showing you the next, to show the next stage. We can come back to that in a minute. Fab. So the next thing I do is make, if you can see on the pendant that we've done there, um, I've got these sections that are coming out and being 3D. So I yeah. needed to think ahead and think, how am I gonna anchor those in? Because if I do a tight weave, I can't thread that thick wire through so the next stage was to create some little loops for the outer wire for okay. those those threads to stick stitch into yeah I see okay so that's the 3d bit where they're stitching yeah into. so I wanted something to anchor the wire into so I had a bit of bit of forethought in this piece not much <laughs> a little bit I like it <laughs> okay so again take a longer length of wire this time around 40 centimeters mm -hmm. 0.8 again 0.8 again yeah all this framework is 0.8 um, and then it's, I'm going to do, for the centre I want it slightly clear, so I'm going to leave two um, plier widths between the bumps I okay. make. So this time I'm going to um, put my pliers on the wire in the, roughly the centre and raise one side up. And then this time I'm going to use my round nose pliers, so I put my round nose pliers right on the edge of that bump, right on the edge of that, in that corner, and then use my finger to push around the pliers to make a little, just a little bump like that. Okay. So okay. you're right at the tip there, aren't you? Yeah, right at the tip of the pliers. And now I want to um, bring this wire back so that it runs in a line. Okay. So then I put my pliers just, um, sorry, I have to turn it over, just in to that curve and then push against it. So tw twist against, against it to bring that wire back into line. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So then we'll do that again. So this, you know, I said I wanted two pliers widths just for the centre. So yeah. I'll go one, just by eye, move it along and do another one. And then I'm going to do another bump. Round those pliers in, bring the wire up. And then to get it back down, you use your flat nose pliers to bring that corner into shot, into, bring it into line. So you've just got a bump. Okay, so the next one is again, a just a pliers width. And you just need one pliers width. Just one pliers width for the next one. So this is going to be the centre of the cabochon. So I wanted to keep it slightly clear. I want yeah. and the arms to come sort of either side. So you just leave a bit, a bit more of a gap for the centre. And I'm going to do two on either side. But in the main, in the main pendant, I've done um, four on either side. Okay. Uh, in fact, I think one's slightly different to the other. But I'm going to recommend that you do four on either side okay. because it helps you um, engage it. It helps you sort of finish off all the ends of the wire. Okay. Now, for this, because you're doing the little bumps, you yeah. actually, you've got real precision round nose pliers there, haven't you? I have, yeah. yeah. Does that make it that's easier to do? That's it's my exact pliers. Is it? And these are the, my favourites that I found, yeah. Really? Why are these your favourite ones? Um, I've got the precision round nose pliers here for you now. It's the whole in, range, in actually. You've got the long nose ones And I've got the well. long nose ones, the long chain nose pliers. Yeah. I, I don't know um, what, what it is. They're the right size for me. Um, the tips are really quite fine and they, they, the purchase that you get on your wire is really strong, stronger than s others. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure 
what it is exactly that does it, but um, any time I do a workshop, I recommend people try my pliers if they're struggling, and they always find it easier to work with mine. Really? So these so are the ones that those you... those are the ones, yeah. Th these are the ones that you will be working yeah. with? Yeah, um, So if you want, if you haven't... Maybe you've got the ones in the starter kit, which are fine. They are, of course, yeah, they're of course. absolutely fine. But if you've been trying, you know, you've maybe improved a little bit more, you want to get slightly more... Um, Slightly more niche tools, if we're honest. Slightly more precision end tools than this is your opportunity to now. Because for these little bumps, really, you almost want them to be invisible, don't you? Yeah. You almost want to yeah. look like these are floating. And you can do that by getting the precision nose on the round nose, can't yeah, you? Yeah, you can. They, they are very good. They are beautiful. Yeah. You've got two of the tools here. And I'm bringing to you some chartreuse wire as well. 10 metres worth 0 0.6 you've got here. So great to make your findings with. Great for rings as well. Uh, lovely, uh, kind of a bit of an all-rounder, really, 0.6, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's really, really is. Great wire. This is your chartreuse coloured wire with your round nose pliers and the elongated five and a half inch long chain nose pliers. Your price should be £12.35, which is astonishing. That random 35 at the end is because we've been price slashing. I think it was price slash on the wire, so it's a bit random price. But that's not even original price, so it should be even more than that, actually. But we, when we give you our price comparisons, we want it to be honest, we want it to be fair. So we aren't even giving you the RRP of this now. This is with discount, it should be 12.35. Probably should be closer actually to 14 pounds, to be honest. But 12.35 for you today should be a price. We're going under 10. Your price today is just, you're gonna love it. <laughs> Under 10, really? Not by 5p. £8,035, exactly £4 off on this today. What do you think of that? It's, it's a brilliant price. That's stunning, isn't it? Even because like the price drop, but it's a brilliant price. It is actually, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Because the price of tools for professional precision tools like this. Yeah, you're looking, you sometimes, you, you know, for a good pair of pliers, you can pay 20 25 pounds easily easily yeah easy even peasy. more actually oh, yeah. absolutely eight pounds and 35 pence for all three today it's br that's brilliant it's astonishing isn't it my last handful of the kit is at the bottom of the screen and when i say the last handful i mean whoever checks out first gets it uh, congratulations for getting your hands on these ex gc39 that's your code Right. So Next you've done stage. your little nodules so with your nodules. precision round nose. Yeah, we've done our prongs, so we're all set. So now it's it's sort of bringing it all together. So um, we then need four lengths of your 0.8 wire again, and I've done these at 30 centimetres each. Okay. Okay. Um, and that is probably overestimating, but it's better to have a bit more than, than not enough. Yeah. So then we layer them together, but we add them in one at a time to start with. So I've got them all laid out ready, and I've sort of run them through my hands so that they're all um, straight, no, you know, no major kinks in them. Okay. Don't worry if they're a bit bendy and wobbly, because they're actually going to get more bendy and wobbly as we go along. Okay. But the weave will all bring it all in together anyway. Okay. So when I'm doing a whole pendant, I'm not doing it here because I'm not doing the whole thing. Um, I would take a two meter length of my 0.4 wire. And that should allow me not to have to add any more in. Oh, that's good. Um, which, because it's often the adding in of, of new pieces of wire that causes you problems and you get little messy joins or sticky itey bits of wire that can hurt or scratch. So if you can, if you can work with two meters, that's great. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna work from the center one way and then from the center the other way. Okay. So actually you're only working with one meter at a time. Oh, that's really good okay. then. Okay, so the other meter just sort of sits out the way. Relaxes. Until you come come to it. Fab. So start in the center, which means you have to start in the center of your piece as well. So you find the center, the center prong. Take your um, 0.4 millimeter wire. And what we're going to do is get these pliers out of the way. What we're going to do is just wrap the 0.4 around just sort of next to the next to the sort of prong where it starts to separate. And then that that just tucks in there then you've got nothing sticking out. Okay, wrap it there and once around in between. Okay, so that's one wrap done and that's enough just to secure it until we put the next piece in. What's left over, that other half a metre of um, 0.4 wire here, just run it down and, and sit it next to the wires on the other opposite side. Now you take one length of the 
plain wire, so you've got four lengths ready cut. One length and lay it in, roughly centre, and you lay it on top, and then you take the 0.4 wire and you wrap around both pieces of wire together. Don't put any tension on. Okay. It's so soft it will bend where anything touches it. So don't, put, don't put, pull it or put any tension, just literally wrap it around once. Okay. Sorry okay. to interrupt, just have to let you know at home. The reason the graphics has changed is because that was a sellout. Really sorry, I started off with loads of them, but it was a sellout. So sorry if you did miss out. It looked like there was about 40 of you that did miss out. Sorry about that. Uh, this is going to be a sellout soon as well. So just check out your baskets. You've got to be quick today. got to be quick. Yes. Okay, so now the next wire comes in. So you lay that one um, parallel with the one that just came before. And you take the wire again and you just wrap it around. But, and what you want to do is you want it to bend um, at that at where it touches the wire. Okay. So you're not doing a circle, you, you are doing um, sort of a rectangle move, yeah. you know? So you're bringing the wire all the way around and then just I just pinch it with my fingers just to keep it so it's not circular, it's, it's more rectangular wrapped around. Okay, okay so that's my, my third wire in. So now I have my fourth. And again, wrap straight around. And give it a pinch. Then my fifth lay it in and then bring the wire around so over the top and then down the back pinch and now my wire with the bumps in um, I'm just going to straighten this out a little bit so that it doesn't overlap my other wires um, and then lay that one in and again you're working in the centre remember we started at the centre point so the centre is the bit where you did the two gap yeah. isn't it the so two the biggest gap. Yeah. gaps yeah. yeah so lay it in at the centre yeah. and there is room to slide this up and down a little bit so don't worry too much if it slips out of place or is not dead centre you will have room you will have the ability because like I said when I'm not putting any tension on those wires can still slip and slide a little bit okay. and we actually need them to, to when we form the shape Got you. if it was too tight when we tried to form the ship, when we tried to form it around the cover it would it would be quite angular rather okay. than fluid. Okay, good tip. Okay, so then we take that all the way around all of the wires together, and again squish down. Okay, so now we've you can see we've sort of got like this triangle forming. Can mm -hmm. we see that? Yeah. Yeah. So now we want to mimic that, mirror that on the opposite side. So this time instead of coming all the way around, we're gonna miss that top wire so we're going to come in between so you're missing the one with the bumps yeah miss the one with the bumps go all the way around bring it up back at the back and then you're going to go in between the next one down so you can just separate these wires a bit it, this is actually a really quick weave once you get going it's very quick because I suppose the further along you go, you've got obviously less tails then, haven't you? Yeah, less and you can splay them out even you can more. Splay them out more. Yeah, so we splay them out a little bit to get in between. So now we come in between uh, the next one down. Again, bring the wire round, and don't forget to flatten in between each each time you go round, and that just helps keep it all in line. And then we miss, we bring that one up, and come in between the next one down down and around and press then the next one and what I find is the plier width is the perfect width of this weave with five with um, six strands because we're actually going around six strands ah. so the plier width you know it seems like it's a bit of a squeeze towards the end it six. is actually just right that's perfect okay so then we go around the, the two bottom ones there then we come to the prong and this time we come up just around the prong and it sort of sits that wire sits in the in between the prong like we did on the first one. So it sits in there so it doesn't affect the weave. Then come around the other side of the prong, once around the wire with the prong on it. So just once around there with the prong. And then we're ready to do the next triangle. Okay. I'm getting my head in the camera on ice because I've got high heels on. Yeah, but you've got lovely hair today, so it's alright, <laughs> really. <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Becky gave me a lovely compliment earlier. Do you have to? I was trying to be really nice. I was trying to be dead nice. I came in and she said, you look good. For you. 
No, um, that's not what happened. Well, that's sort of what happened happen. the first time. But then it was when I said to you, that was obviously a joke to be like, oh, I'm so funny and nasty. But then it was the second one that was actually meant to be a genuine comment, a genuine compliment. She'd obviously come in before and we have a look through the pieces and everything. And then you went to put your makeup on. Yeah. And I went, oh, you look lovely now. <laughs> I didn't mean to at all. You look beautiful before, but yeah, you'd surpassed yourself. It's all right, Becky. Mm. You look lovely now. <laughs> okay, what I'm doing? I'm just starting the next one. But basically, um, if you want me to, do you want me to run through that one more time? Go around it's up it one to you. More time, I've got about think? 17 minutes left. Oh, 20 no. minutes left. No, we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll move on from there. But it's that pattern all the way around now, and you do that in between every single, okay. every single spoke, or or um, what should we call them? Prong. Yeah. You do it between every single prong. Okay. Yes. So every single prong has that little weave in it. Beautiful. Right. Let me put that aside. Okay. I'll finish that one and make one for myself, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Right, so here's one. I've gone all the way around. You can see the last two prongs. If I bend these back, the last two prongs are here and here. Okay. And um, they are the ones that sort of sit at the back. That's well, actually, they're going to sit at the front. So what I've done, if I bend it, if I bend it out straight again, or straight-ish, I'm going to go all the way out. What I've done is every other prong I've tipped up. So the ones this side um, are sitting flat against the back. That's kind of where the back of our cabochon sits. And the others I've pulled up and out, OK? They're all sticking up. Love right. that, yeah. So you've got the... Yeah. Uh, front and back. Yeah, front covered. and back, that's it. So then I put my cabochon in. And remember to line up the bottom of your cabochon um, with the largest gap. Uh, in between your bumps, if you mm -hmm. remember we put those in on purpose. Yeah. And then you slowly, and you do this really slowly and gradually, you slowly um, bend the, this around into the shape of the cabochon and you just keep doing it slowly, okay, until you get the shape. Because what's happening is as you are bending in inwards to bring this into a teardrop, the, we the, the, the wires are uh, sliding in these, within the weave. Mm -hmm. So this length is going to end up obviously longer, this length on the outside is going to end up longer than this on the inside. So as we're pulling it around we're sort of shortening and compressing the weave on the inside and elongating it on the outside. Okay, So you do need to do this slowly and do it in lots of movements rather than one quick one. Um, and then you should have the perfect shape you need for your cabochon. So just keep an eye on it, keep checking. Um, and I think for me I'm happy that that cabochon sits in there and that's about right. So okay. of course you would alter this depending on the shape or size of your cab. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and you'll just need to, what I do is I make the prongs first and then I just keep pulling them around the cabochon until I'm happy with that's the right size. You know you were saying before about the that's quite an easy shape to work with and then the heart would be a step up. What are we saying for ovals? Where does that lie on the scale? They're sort of you know, ovals and circles are sort of just up from a from a teardrop. I think they're the next, the next, level. the next level. Yeah, get you. Yeah. Um, I have got cabs for you right now. I gave you a little heads up on my Facebook page yesterday. These are them, and these are beautiful, aren't they? Take a little look. All of them are this oval shape, but I've got to say, one of my favourite things is. Let me just give you one of those. These little buttons, like they're like. They're lovely, aren't they? Aren't they fab? You've got some that are the stereotypical en cabochon shape with the dome, but then I've got two here that are like flat buttons, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are like little buttons. They are gorgeous. Let me show you the difference in these. So this is that cabochon dome, and then this is your flattened one, but if I show you them stood up, they're actually the same size. But look at the light and how the light plays completely differently on these. I love this one. Let me pick this one up for you. It's almost got an amber light quality to it, doesn't it? Can you see that? Oh, yeah. It's got like this internal life to it. Gorgeous clarity on that as well. Oh, that's, that's stunning. Lovely. This is your red onyx that we have here. You have got a hundred and eighty carats worth. Now I've got here two, four, six, eight, ten. I've got 
but of course yours might alter slightly. You might have nine, but maybe one's a little bit bigger, or you might have 11, and you've got some that's slightly smaller. You'll be getting around 10 though, more than likely. Um, you have got from sizes of approximately 23 by 18, all the way up to these big boys of around the 31 by two. Let me just show you the difference in size here. Wouldn't that be gorgeous as a little graduated piece actually? Yeah. Really, really pretty. Now, onyx isn't something we have in that often. And the fact of the matter is, I'm about to do a price slash on it. <laughs> I don't know why. Why not? We have just been selling out of things left, right and centre today and yesterday. So why not just keep up the trend? Um, you've got these beautiful cabs, gorgeous to work with. Your price should be... That's really good. Because that means I say I said I had ten, so I'd be working out on like one one pound ten p or something each, wouldn't it? Which is amazing because think what I said before about that agate one, and it would be in around the seventeen pounds mark, and that was agate onyx generally higher price than agate, isn't it? Mm. So that's an astonishing price, one pound ten about each. I'm gonna make it better. No, one pound. What would it be? Well, that be each. Like one pound twenty actually, wouldn't it? Because it's the extra pound, yeah. So more like one pound twenty. I'm taking it down. What two though? <laughs> Just think, right? See all this in my tray. This is what's left from my kit. Right. And, and I've got, uh, and I've made all my demo pieces, and been using it for today's bit of demoing as well. Um, and I've got a little bit of this left, but not much. I'm not sure where it is. Yeah. So you had that in with, if you've got this kit. Yeah, you got the kit. You get this as well. It all ties in. And you've still got all this you can use with that as well. And it's less than £30 worth. And for less both than of 30 them. quid for all of it, yeah. That's fab. There's loads of you Amazing. coming in. I know multi-buyers. I would too. It's really hard to show you these. I'll tell you what, if you stay there, I'll lift it up really quickly so that you can kind of get an idea of the shape. But... Blink and you'll miss it because these are going to fall off. You're ready. Did you get that really quick? I just wanted you to see the shape. That worked, didn't it? Did it work? Yeah. It work? I said blink and you'll miss it. Yeah. <laughs> blink. Absolutely stunning. You've gone off my page again. There's so many of you getting your hands on this. How many quantity? I'd just like to let you know kind of ish where we're working. 76 I've started off with. I've now got about 50. They're all ready. I've got over a third gone right now. That's ticked, clicked off. Um, we are ooh, showing off with me fractions. Um, let me show you a few of them sat up just to give you a really good idea of the variety you get in here. We need one of those sticky boards for the studio. Sticky bead mats. Yeah. You're bang on. You are bang on. Oh, huh. Eight pounds and ninety. Whoa! Eight pounds and ninety-five pence for you today. U L R U forty-seven. It's gonna sell out because I'm last chance saloon on it right now. Eight ninety-five. Right then. So I bent this around and I've got it in the exact shape I want. And now where the wires cross at the top, I'm definitely gonna have to do this on the overhead. I think where the wires cross at the top, I, I need to do something with all those wires, obviously. Okay. So um, if I just hold that. I'm going to hold that steady like that. Can we still see? Yeah. Okay. So then if I would, what I would do now is take a marker or some sort of pencil that can mark the wire and mark directly um, upwards from the, from the center. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in a straight line, straight up. Okay. All right. I can't show you. In, I haven't got my marker with me. But yeah, straight there. And that's the line that I'm then going to use my pliers to bend onto. Okay. All right. So I, I know roughly where it is. So it's at an angle. So if I put my pliers, imagine I had, an, had a pen line there, put my pliers with the edge right on that pen line. Yeah. And then I'm going to use my finger to push against the pliers again so I get a really sharp bend on all of the wires. So I'm going to just push up. And this is where this wire being so soft makes this job very easy. Can you imagine bending six wires together if it was, if it was, if it was coated? coated. That would be really yeah. tough. So that's one. So then I'll do the same on the other one, same on the other side. So get the angle that you want and then um, push against the pliers to get that bend. And then when we draw them together, they should sit and form that perfect, they should all sit together, I'll show you from the back. Oh, sit I see. together like that. Okay? Yeah, perfect. So they meet nicely. Yeah. Right, so the top two, I'm going to discard for a minute. I'm going to pull up to the top and they're going to become my bail. Okay. All right. So leave those there. 
And then, you know, I said about using that two meters of wire, mm -hmm. we've got these little tails left, and that's going to help me join these sort of legs together then. So separate the pairs, because you'll have matching pairs from either side. So we're going to take the first pair, push, put them together, take the 0.4 wire that you've got left, and wrap very tightly around the base of those two wires. Okay. So go just once around. That's those two. Then we take the next two, the next pair, and go all the way around those two wires as well. Mm -hmm. So all the way around and back to the other side. And then just, you can, the wire sort of slips up, so just make sure that they're sitting right at the base. Just squidge it down. Just squidge it down, yeah. Okay, and pull really nice and tight with that wire. Then you take the next two pairs, same again. Take the wire all the way around them. Through. And make sure they're squidging down right at the base. Okay. So I know there's a lot of wires for you to get the camera in and really see it, but um, I think if you're holding this in your hand, it's really self-explanatory what I'm saying. Once you've got it, your eyes on it yourself. Okay. You'll see they just need joining together these wires to stop it's the frame kind of spreading. Just knitting them together, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And you might find a better way of tying them together, but this worked for me. So I'm going to go around each of those sets of wires and just wrap them together. Once I've gone around one way and wrapped all of those sets of wires together, including the set that you're going to use as the bail, okay. Then you come back on yourself and work down back along that line of of wires, making sure that again they're, it's all very pushed right to the bottom. Okay, so then back around the next set, all the way around. Pull it in nice and tight. Next set, all the way around. Pull it in nice and tight. Next set. And again, going down. Yeah. Pull it in nice and tight, and then the last one. And that's enough then to keep all those wires sort of snugly in place. Sorry, it's moving around a lot. And just put it on the counter then and just push down with your thumbnails either side to make sure it's all nice and snug. Um, and then to further sort of firm that up, you can start just sp splitting them, so spreading them out. So take each pair at a time, pull one set at a time out to either side. And you can see what these are going to be. These are going to be those legs. The legs that you yeah. go into the nodules. That's right, that's right. So take each pair, just take a bit of time to see which way they naturally sit they might get crossed over in that process of wrapping and just pull them out to the sides. Okay, last one. Okay, so now I'm going to pop in my cabochon because I can come in now. Um, so pop the cabochon in, just sit it on top so it's sitting nicely on top of those um, prongs Prongs. at the back. Mm -hmm. That's nice and flat and flush against there. And then these prongs at the front, we're going to tip over. Um, but just before we do, if you just take the tip of your rhinos pliers onto the tip of each of the prongs and just very slightly turn the pliers in so that the prong has got a slight bend on it. So not quite 90 degrees. Oh, no. No, no just, just a slightly, tiny. slight tip. That's all. Just slightly bending it inwards. So it's still an obtuse angle, isn't it? Very good. I don't know what that means, but yeah. Oh, it just means like slightly <laughs> large, <laughs> over 90, like larger than 90. Right, slight, just slightly tipping it in. And what we're doing, the reason we're doing that is because when we um, put them down onto the gemstone, and um, the gemstone's rounded, so you, what you'll get is just this little lip where it's slightly protruding at the end. So if I tip them in first, it then seems to hug and sort of claw the gemstone really much more than um, just being just flat. Being flat. So just slightly. Good tip. Slightly on each one. Right, now this job you need to do is really push it down firmly on a, on a nice uh, firm surface. Yeah. And then what you're going to try and do is do them symmetrically. So you do two at a time. Um, if, so the opposites at a time. If you don't do that, what the danger is is that you'll push the gemstone over and it won't sit centrally. So if you do the two opposites at the same time, you're getting the same pressure either side and then it will it will Keep hopefully it. sit snugly. So if we go, I'm going to start with the two bottom ones. So pushing, holding the gemstone down firmly with my thumbs and using my four fingers just to pull those 
two on the opposite sides over. Right, then it's best to turn your piece of work round and do the, op the next two opposites. Okay. So I've got two, I've got two sets. Then let's do, I'll do the bottom and the tops together, so I've got three. So I don't need to push my gemstone down so much anymore because they are, it is pretty locked in. Okay. So I can take my thumbs now on the two top prongs and my finger on the bottom one and pull all of them in at the same time and push down until I'm happy that all the prongs are sort of in place and That's holding. really locked in. Holding that cabbage on, that's not going anywhere. No, that ain't okay. going nowhere. So that's all ready. Gorgeous. Right. So then the bale, I'll just quickly speak to you about the bale because we mm -hmm. do this weave ever such a lot. You should have another tail of 0.4 wire um, left over from the other side of your wrap, if you remember. And we've used one to tie in all these pieces, and we've got the other one, should have the other one left. Okay. So then you just wrap a couple of times around the bottom of that bale area first, just to anchor the wire. With that 0.4. Yeah. Um, and then you go, for this weave, I've gone all the way around one of the, we call these legs, all the way around one of the legs of my bale. Okay. And then over the top, in between the legs, and then all the way around the other leg. Figure okay. of eight. It's a figure of eight, yes. But you must remember to always go around the leg at least one wrap. I mean, you can, you can stretch out the weave as long as you like um, by doing more multiple wraps around the around the legs then but one wrap I found was a nice tight weave but if you don't what will happen is you'll have an open eight and then these can slip and slide in between and it makes you have a messy weave okay um, and that's where a lot of people fall fall down they say their weaving isn't neat well as long as you anchor every time to the wire you then you tend to get a much neater more consistent weave so all the way around one leg once through the middle, all the way around that leg, once, and then through the middle. And you just keep Brilliant. repeating that for as long as you want the bell. Now I think about, um, I've kept mine going in a V shape like this, and I've doubled it over. Mm -hmm. um, so I get quite a wide bale um, at the back and narrow at the front. Love that. Um, and I think it's probably around an inch of weaving, and then okay. just over my pliers to create the shape. Let me show you the back because this is where the bale, so we've started here, and you keep it wide into the V so yep. that it stays wider at the back, which That's is then it. where you loop it around. Yeah. So those tails come round to the front. The ends of the, you'll have um, tails left on your bale. Obviously, this is far too long if you're only doing about an inch of weave okay. from here. So you'd weave up to about this point and then trim these off So for about to about five centimetres. Then coil those in a spiral, which we'll do a bit of spirals in a minute. Spiral those and then they just sit sort of snugly on the front on the of the bay and they yeah. cover any messy bits. Fab. Right. So let's go on to these legs. Right now this bit, um, you know weaving is um, really fine and intricate. Sometimes getting a big curve is more difficult than getting a tiny little weave. Okay. Okay, because you it's it seems like a harder thing to do to get a fluid um, fluidity in your wire work. Mm -hmm. So spend a bit of time on each leg um, and do one pair at a time. Don't do all one side and then all the other because you find it hard to get symmetry that way. So okay. always work in the pairs. Um, and if you just take your thumb underneath, hold the wire in the palm of my hand, take your thumb underneath the wire um, here and just pull it through your fingers a few times. And what you're doing is you're putting a curve in. Okay? Now then, you take the end of the tip of the wire, don't touch up here, just take from the tip from the end and thread through that little loop you made in the frame. Through that bottom nodule. The first one, yeah. And just pull the wire through, okay, allowing it just to sit. And then you do the same with the other one. And depending on how, you know, how out of control you got with your weaving and how, <laughs> how misbehaving your wires were, it depends mm -hmm. how many times you have to do this to get the wire nice and smooth for you again. But always take it from the end. Because you don't want to bend that shape you've just put no, in. No, no, you don't. So thread through that loop at the bottom again, on the opposite side. And then just with a little bit of manipulation, just work out, if you like, sort of where they're sitting. All right? So they're sort of symmetrical and even for me, so I quite like those there. Once you're happy, just pull the wire upwards against the edge of that loop. Mm -hmm. I'll do the same on the other one. 
pull the wire upwards against the edge of that loop okay, and that's just going to sort of mark where we want it to sit. Okay. All right, and you can always adjust it if you find it hasn't gone quite to plan. I'm working at a funny angle, so this isn't going to be perfectly symmetrical, but that's my, a start. And then I want to cut that wire just sort of where it bends. It's just a couple of mil there. Yeah, very, I only want a tiny, tiny loop. I want it to sort of hide. Yeah. So on the end where that's come through, very tip of your pliers, round those pliers onto that piece of wire and tip it round as far as you can go without damaging the frame. So tip it round and then it just sort of hooks then. And then use your round nose pliers just to get in, uh, your flat nose pliers, sorry, just to get in. I don't know if I can see that. And pinch, because that angle, there you go. Yeah, pinch that together so that that little loop closes around that bump. Okay. And then the same on the other one. Just pinch so that the little loop closes on the side of that bump. And they should just sort of hide in there then. Okay. Why don't you do the same with each one? I'll just quickly pop these through. I won't do all the pinching. And so each one goes through, and you'll have a couple left. Through the notules that you need yeah, them to go through. Each of the loops. Now, if you wanted to, you could um, do with them on opposite sides, and it would create sort of a pattern at the top. So you could do that. You could experiment with this, crisscross them over. Okay. Got nearly all of them through now. So it's quite insect like, isn't it, as it's forming? It like. is actually, yeah. So there you go, I've got all of those sort of through now, and it's just up to me to just trim them all off now and make sure that they're all in the right place. And then the these two that are left, I've used just to thread go thread up through in between some of these loops and um, these lengths and just as you pull it through just then allow it to bend just pull it round like a lever and you'll get some little spirals forming you can be as decorative as you like with this bit on the heart I didn't do this at all but on the um, on this teardrop cabochon I had extra tails left over so I did s just sort of do things to to pretty it up really to add some detail so that's up to you what you do with these two wires you could simply spiral them uh, and just sit them at the top of the pendant it's really really entirely up to you but that's it that is how you make it and then we patina and I think we're going to cover that we're going to cover the patina process in the next inspiration second designer inspiration yeah. we're going to be patinaing and it's the same process for wire work as it is for sheets so we can cover everything you need to know to finish this the same as that one in the next inspiration. Isn't that absolutely stunning? Do you love it or what? These pieces are just mind blowing. They really, really are. Now's your opportunity to get your hands on the last five or six of this kit. $21.95, you had a £10 saving. You have everything that you need to create these pieces in there, including 0.8 raw copper, 0.6 raw copper, 0.4 raw copper, that beautiful multi-strand of pearls, mm. that strand of womanite garnet, those elongated drops and the beautiful rounds as well, those faceted rounds, so beautiful for you. And Gemma Crow, you've just done justice to this. And the two cabs, of course, don't forget about the cabs. Thank so you. gorgeous. I loved it. I absolutely loved working with these, yeah. Really? Yeah. And you guys will at home too. Now, I'm going over to a very quick break. Last chance to get your hands on these gorgeous cabs which are on screen. Now, way over half of my stock has gone. Once everybody checks out their baskets, I'm gonna be at the bar in my last chance saloon. I'll have 20 left, that will be it. So do that now while we run to a break and stay exactly where you are because after the break, brand new strands. I'll see you after this. This is an important announcement to all of our Sky TV viewers. From Tuesday the 19th of August, our Sky Channel number will be changing from 655 to Sky 665. So remember to tune in to Sky 665 from August the 19th so you don't miss a thing. 
If you miss a jewelry maker show, then simply go to our YouTube page where you'll be able to find hours of jewelry maker footage. Search by show, date or type. Alternatively, search by guest designer by using our playlist page. You can also find hours of tutorials with handy hints and tips to give you inspiration. Our YouTube page is updated on a daily basis so you can access any show at any time. Stay in touch with Jewelry Maker. Jewelry Maker are having a web exclusive clearance on our scale mail stock. Head over to the website now and grab yourself a bargain. Offer ends at midnight on Friday the 15th. If you're new to Jewelry Maker, simply contact our call centre and we'll send you a tutorial DVD and get started booklet all free of charge. Uh, it's the Why Work for Beginners course that I'm on today with Louise. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. It's been a wonderful course, uh, starting from very basics. Every question that uh, we had for Louise, she's answered, and it's been a marvellous um, uh, education in learning to do things with Why Work. The colour of rose quartz ranges from a very tender pale pink to a delicate powder pink and can be transparent through to translucent. This gem has adorned ornaments and jewellery since ancient times. Known as the gemstone of true love, it's said that rose quartz allows you to get to know your true self and to love that true self in all its beauty. And this most certainly <laughs> will do that for you. <laughs> I can't get over how beautiful this brand new strand is. You heard the, the little voice over there and you heard it talking about it being the gemstone of love and you talk about it running from beautiful, translucent, all the way through. So a lot, a lot of the rose quartz that we see on Jewelry Maker has got such a silk-like silk internal body that you get a lovely candy floss tone but you don't get this the most sought after of clarities this most certainly is the gemstone of love and you're going to love it too because it's brand new today. If I show you this on a blackboard, you should be able to just get a feel of exactly how beautiful a blush colour this is. It is exquisite. It is clarity beauty, the gemstone of love. I'll be straight with you. Let's be honest here. Let's be honest. There's no point messing around about this. We have rose quartz on a lot. You will be used to seeing rose quartz sometimes around the seven, eight pounds mark. This isn't going to be that. This isn't. I'll be straight with you. It's gonna be over 10 pounds. For this quality, for this stunning quality, you should be 
expecting around the 15 pounds mark at our prices. That's what you should be expecting. It's going to be over 10, I'll be straight with you straight away. We do see a lot of rose quartz and I think rose quartz defines perfectly what we mean when we say prices will be indicative of quality. Now, this strand of rose quartz isn't gonna be hitting around the seven pounds mark, why not? Well, no inclusions. There's not that opaque body, which is nice, don't get me wrong, we like that. In the gemstone world though, when it comes to rose quartz, when you're looking for quality, you're not looking for that, you're looking for this. This is what you're looking for. You're looking for clarity and beautiful clarity you have here too. When you're looking at quality rose quartz as well, you're looking for a palette of color that runs throughout symmetrically and evenly. You've got that here. You don't generally have that on the eight pounds rose quartz. You just don't. You'll have some that are really, really deep in pink. You'll have some that have got loads and loads of inclusions that are completely and absolutely opaque and like silky in the middle. Um, that's what you'll be looking at on the eight pound strand. The 15 pound strand, you will be looking at an even saturation and an even tone throughout. That saturation, by the way, is often faked. It's often made, um, it's often treated to give you that. That's how you get symmetry in rose quartz of this quality. We don't bother heating rose quartz that is really, really silky, the eight pounds, we just don't bother. With this quality though, we do. You can bother then to apply some heat to make it so that every single section of this has got that symmetry and tone. This though is natural. So this, <laughs> hasn't had that applied to it. This hasn't had heat applied to it so that you've got symmetry there to give it the appearance of being more expensive. This is natural. So in rose quartz, essentially right here, you've got number one on the checklist of high price clarity, check. Number two on the price, on the high price checklist, you're looking for symmetry in tone, check. Next point that you're looking for is a beautiful, delicate tone and color that is mingling throughout every single one. You've got that, check. Those three main pieces that you are looking for that Tiffany look for in their rose quartz when they work with it. They're not going to be working with the rose quartz that has all the inclusions and the silk. That's not what they do. All of the pieces that Tiffany work with are like this for those three reasons that I've just given you that this strand has got implicitly. The fact of the matter is, if you were to get this today for 14 pounds and 95 pence at our prices, we would be beating our competition on quality hand over fist left, right, and center. Your price today is going lower than that though. Brand new strand today is just 11 pounds and 95 pence. This is proof that we do what we do so flipping well. Honestly, we really do. We genuinely, we have nailed it on this strand. This quality you will not be seeing every day. This is a brand spanking new strand for you. Look, how often do I say to you, look at the fire in this rose quartz. I don't think I've ever said that about rose quartz actually. I've never said that about rose quartz. Look at the fire internally. Why do I never say that? Because usually you don't, you can't even see into the gemstone. 
you can't even see into it because there's so many inclusions. There's so much of that silk-like texture in there. You've got fire and brilliance on rose quartz in these gorgeous elongated plain drops, brand spanking new, 120 carats. What do you think of this Gemma Crow? Uh, I think it's, it's just lovely, isn't it? Really isn't lovely. It? Isn't it? It's like, yeah, it is, it's the clarity, isn't it? Yeah. You can see your skin tone through it, so it makes it even more pinky and rosy. And that actually means that it's going to work with more gemstones and more colours than the one that's loads of inclusions, the one that you can't see through. Because actually, you, whatever colour you put with this, it's going to shine through, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I can imagine it with the smoky quartz that you've got coming up later. Yes. Absolutely. Nice. Huh. The smoky quartz, let me show you. Another brand new strand coming up for you in a bit. Oh. Oh. Them's chunky. That's how I would wear pink. With, Is it? With a brown, with, you know, a tone it in that way. That's lovely. There nice are loads of you coming in on the phone. Loads of you. Your names have gone off my screen. Multi buyers on this as well. Am I right in thinking I didn't actually have that much quantity, even though it was new? Because I'll be honest with you, to find quality like this is really, really hard. Really, really hard. So I started off with just over 100, but actually I've got almost half of me stock gone already on this. £11.95. This is proof that when it comes to quality, we can still do astonishing prices 11 pounds 95 pence for and i'll say it straight out the best quality rose quartz i have ever brought to you before k-e-r-u-09 loads of you on the phone i promise we will be with you do you know what for the best best quality hands down when you look at the GIA checklist, the GIA, obviously, uh, the Geological Institute of America, and they're, they're kind of the big governing body on, they do all of your education and everything else. When it comes to the GIA checklist on rose quartz, I can easily say this has got all of them on there. Best quality rose quartz I've ever brought to you at one of the lowest prices, actually, that I've ever brought to you. Um, 11 95 for you today. Get it whilst you can, brand spanking new. Oh, hello, beautiful favorite gem. Well, Hi. top two, top two. What? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gemma Crow. <laughs> uh, you're my favorite Gemma, if that makes you feel better. I don't know any other Gemmas, but... Oh, right, thanks. But yeah, but you're still my favourite. <laughs> you're not very good at this, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's me honesty, it stumbles every time. <laughs> uh, this is your gorgeous Imperial Topaz. Take a little look at this beauty. Imperial Topaz has got such a stunning history and background. It really, really has. Um, from the ancient Egyptian times, we are, it was essentially, it used to be, um, it used to be kind of adorning the goddesses of that time. So of course we know that Cleopatra was described as a goddess, wasn't it? Although she was sort of a living being. Um, it was adorning those beautiful high up celebrity of the time essentially. Now the reason for that is because the ancient Egyptians, that's what I love about certain gemstones, you know I love a good gemstone story don't I, I really really do. Um, but what I adore about this gem in particular is the story over time hasn't really changed that much. So. Nowadays, when we think of Imperial Topaz, like we were talking before about if you believe in kind of the crystal healing and everything, obviously, you know, we can't say whether it's true or it's not, but if that is what you believe in, you will know that Imperial Topaz has a background in, um, it's, it's meant to strengthen the wearer, they believe, it's meant to give you, it's meant to empower you. Now, I love that point of that because the history of this, they, that's always been believed always so right back in egyptian times when cleopatra used to adorn herself in this gemstone and emerald and they were worn as a, as a pairing it was called gemstone of the sun and that's because the ancient egyptians believed it was colored and given to them 
by Ra. Now, Ra, Ra was their god of the sun, essentially. And they believed that this gemstone, because it was given by God Ra, they believed that this gemstone and God Ra then himself was giving the wearer protection. So they believed that if you wore this gemstone, it protected you because essentially they thought that Ra God, there was a little piece of him in every single stone. Now that then continues from ancient Egyptian times to the Roman times. And the ancient Romans used to believe that their sun God, who was the sun God Jupiter, they believed that this gemstone was given to them by Jupiter, their sun God. And they believed that when you wore it, a little bit of Jupiter was passed on to you and that that was to neutralize enchantments so that's another piece of protection essentially isn't it that the romans used to believe then the greeks whose sun god weirdly enough was also called jupiter and um, they named it after them they actually called the gemstone itself jupiter and they believed that this was meant to increase your well to them they wouldn't have called it this but it kind of increased your what's it called that makes you poor like or your you know like you're in a fight what's that called metabolism. your no not metabolism Oh. Immune uh, your immune system that's the one they believe that it would boost your immune system so again protection so i just think that's astonishing and now in crystal healing that is still believed so the egyptians said that it was a protector in general the romans believed that it would neutralize um any enchantments and the greeks believed that it would boost your immune system and nowadays with crystal healing, it still believes that this is very much a, a protector of health and, and mental health and the whole body and the family. It's absolutely astonishing, isn't it, that all of these stories are passed down. It's even more astonishing when I tell you the price today should be, should. Uh-huh. Never seen before price. Don't worry, you people who've already bought it at 21.95, because you're all going to be paying the same price, ladies and gents, today. More people coming in now. Just realised what's going on. Yep, going under 20. 17 pounds and 95 pence. That is a massive, massive saving, isn't it? Four pounds saving on a gemstone that we can only get our hands on a few months of the year. This year we've been able to get it uh, even less because this year, because of the horrendous mining conditions in certain areas, we were actually behind two months on getting it. It's just really, really crazy. £17.95. How do you feel about Imperial Topaz? I, I love Imperial Topaz. I worked with it as a challenge the first time I ever got my hands on it. Mm. And um, and it had been talked about so much that we were getting it. We were all really excited. Yeah. And when I when I got my hands on it, I, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, I thought it would be different. You know, I imagined it to be that clear, very sparkly topaz that you get, you know, set in rings. Yeah. But actually, I love it more so. I love it more for the inclusions and for the different colours inside it. And look at that golden tones running through it. It's isn't beautiful. It? It's, it is a very powerful gemstone, and it looks gorgeous in anything you put it in. It's yeah. really lovely. If you were to work a metal with this, what colours would you go for? Because actually, I could imagine this with raw copper would be lovely. Yeah, it's nice if you you know if you don't want to go down the patina route and the raw copper route, then antique bronze wire looks lovely with it. it keeps it very earthy and very lovely. you know antiquey. I love that yeah. idea. Nice, very nice, gorgeous, and it's yours today. Never seen before price, lowest price, seventeen pounds and ninety five pence for you today. Ooh. It's only been seen once before. I love the shiller on this. Oh my gosh, this is doing two things so beautifully. It is your peach moonstone. But you'd be forgiven to believe, you are not gonna be able to see this, but when you get it home, you'd be forgiven to believe that this was sunstone because you've got the shiller that moonstone gives us. You see it there? But actually, when you look up close, you've got the adventurescence as well. You've got the, those um, the, uh, those little sparkly, glittery sections. Can you see? There. Now, they're glittery. But then look at the quality of that, that shiller coming across every single one of these. Oh, my gosh. Gorgeous, that, isn't it? Um, 160 carats worth you have here. Now, you can see the quality instantly, because look, you can see that shiller from where you are. <laughs> at home um you can see it through the camera so the camera's a good sort of seven feet away from me but look you could even see it 
Now that shows you the quality of this. And, every, and even down here, even when I'm just shimmying this top one, it's affecting the ones underneath and you can see the base of these. Now these are your eight mil rounds. So one of your favorite, one of your most workable pieces. You've only seen this once before. So congratulations if you're tuning in today, you're gonna to be one of some of the first people to own it. 160 carats worth of this beautiful peach moonstone. I love how this looks against the skin. I really do. It's gonna go with any skin tone, isn't it? It really is. You can make this pop, you can brighten this up with crazy big bold pieces like this. But then you can keep it calm, you can tone it down. Like what about with the with that Imperial Topaz? Oh my gosh, that's actually a gorgeous color palette. I've just shocked myself there. <laughs> oh, I love that. What would you do if you were to get these two together? Um. I'd be, yeah, I think I would do some wire framework and then add them in together rather than, you know, keep them very, rather than keep them all close together, yeah. I'd sort of spread them out, I think, a bit. To really, so you could really take notice of every single one? Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, I love them. Look at that. Very nice. That, for me, is a little bracelet with them down. Oh, hello. Uh, oh, I'm getting carried away. Uh, you have got here 160 carats worth of this peach moonstone. Everyone's already buying it. Let's get your pricing. Give you all a fair shot. It's just £7.95. Is that a reduced price? I can't actually get over that. This is, this quality doesn't say to me £7.95. Oh, what? oh, I've only got a few left. Is that why? What did you say then? Oh, right, not got that many left. It was only seen the other day. You've only seen it once before. That's why probably it's this ridiculous price then. Because that, that's, I didn't expect that price tag. We have our pre-production meetings before the show, which are like a couple of hours of sitting and then you go through each one. But obviously, that was hours ago now. That was at like half past 10 this morning. So I forget some of the prices. And I forgot this one, definitely. I did not realize that this quality, this beautiful gem would be that price. Me knowing our prices my guess probably would have been the 9.95 route definitely definitely not the 7.95 100% astonishing Look at the quality of it and the thing is don't forget even though you can see a little bit of Schiller at home when you get this actually home and out of this horrendous light then you're going to get even more I've got triple buyers on this congratulations everyone I can't believe that um, RVPO29, that's your code, £7.95. and pence. I've got a bit of Druzy coming up for you now. Not the one I've just shown you. Oh, no. I gave you a little bit of a heads up about this on Facebook, didn't I? And it's because I just love it. This is one of my favourite ways to work with Druzy. Because, for me, I love the big chunky ones, don't get me wrong. But I think you really do have to have a bit of a bit of a head for a big chunky idea, don't you? Whereas when I've got really little pieces like this, I can kind of just go, oh yeah, actually that would add in nicely there. I feel like with the big ones like this, I have to plan my design around these. Whereas with these little workable ones, I feel like I can make a design and then go, oh, do you know what that's missing? Little 10 mil coin of Druzy, perfect. Do you see what I mean? You've got 60 carats worth here of this delicate blue Druzy. Now, if you're not sure what Druzy is, um, essentially it is, like many gemstones, it, it forms from a silica-based substance and what happens is that creeps in to a host rock and because of the dramatic change in pressure and temperature within the host rock, what happens is uh, the crystals don't have time to form and lay flat like they normally would. So they're kind of almost, I always think of it like frozen in time, you know, like they don't have time to form, which is why you get these beautiful crystals on the top, which give you, it looks like, I always think it looks like we stuck glitter on, we haven't. That's just the crystal form. I absolutely adore it. It is like sugar coating, isn't it? Really pretty. Um, you have got 60 carats worth on here. They are 10 mil coins, so really workable, beautiful colour. Your price today is just £17.95. How do you like working with Druzy, love? Oh, I love I love those little coins of Druzy. And Laura Binding this morning did some f um, fabulous rings using that shape Druzy, not that exact strand. But no, but this shape Druzy. So this morning's show, the photographs will be on Facebook. You can see how she's used them, just cage them, not cage them, just wrapped around like a bird's nest style ring 
and they're perfect for that. It's perfect size for a ring, actually. You're right. Yeah, they're the best. They're the best selling rings. Those. Are they? Why do you think that is? Because they're so eye catching. They're so sparkly. And um, my friend um, Sammy came round. For, I do her hair and things when she goes out. She came round. She bought a set of jewellery, um, fake druzy, in a ring, bracelet, necklace fake black druzy and she spent 26 pounds or something like that almost 30 pounds anyway I remember and that was about five or six pieces of fake druzy with some gold chain that was it yeah I said where did you get that uh, just, and why she's got it where she bought a dress you know it was it was hanging up with the dress there you go she bought it oh my goodness that's crazy though isn't yeah. it and for something that's been man-made manufactured in a warehouse somewhere yeah I mean I've never seen it try to be replicated because it's pretty hard to replicate that isn't yeah. it but it was definitely a fake druzy. That's amazing, isn't it? Absolutely astonishing. £17.95 pence for the real deal and plenty of it. Uh, GSGP21, that's your code. Last chance to purchase yours today. Just £17.95. Twinkly. Twinkly gorgeousness. Ben, you know what strand I'm about to do next. Can I have your noise for it, please? Woo! Yep. <laughs> Gosh, our team is awesome. We are such a cool team. Yep, it's giving you a clue. You know what's coming up just because of that noise. It is, of course, your neon appetite. <laughs> oh my gosh. I adore neon appetites. Look at this colouring. It's totally unique. There is no other gemstone in the world that I can think of that can offer you this impactful colour. It's almost, this is going to sound really weird, but it's almost like a out of worldly colour. Now, I know that sounds a bit over the top and a little bit weird, but it is actually, isn't it? Especially when the light spans through, you think, mm. how the heck does Mother Nature manage to create that colour? Because it. this is natural. We haven't dyed it, this colour, at all. And honestly, like, I know you can see it in the studio now and you can see it under these lights, but genuinely, get it home, hold it up to the light, take it outside, and you'll just be blown away. Is that the rain? Oh, oh I'm going to a festival tomorrow. Typical. <laughs> Typical. Can't wait. Setting up my tent for the weekend. Camping in the rain is awesome. Yes. No. Yeah, all right. When you're in there asleep, but not even stood up in a field for seven hours and you're all soggy and stinky. No. If you can hear that, it's the rain. It is literally thrashing it down. Sorry about that if you can hear it. Maybe. Oh. Jenna Crow, can you come and have a little look at this, please? Because you've just seen it on the screen, but I just want to say, show. You know how, like, Looking at it here, it looks pretty good, but then hold it up to the light. It's beautiful. It is my, it's my second favourite gemstone. Is it mm. really? Yeah, and it's a real toughie between Labradorite and Neon Appetite. Oh, why is it your second favourite? It's, it's the colour, it's the texture in the gem, it's, it's how you can have it matte or sparkly. It's, I don't know, it's, and the, the colour's just beautiful. It is, isn't it? It's yeah. totally unique, isn't it? It is unique, and it's. I, in fact, I use that and Labradorite together quite a lot. That's sort of a com. You know, you get precious about some gems that you yeah. will not put anything, just anything with. Yes. So Labradorite and Appetite are, are that for me, and I often put them together. Because they them. just work beautifully. Yeah, yeah. Of course, with the shiller of your Labradorite as well. Mm. That's going to pick got that up blue so. flash. Yeah. I absolutely adore it. I really, really do. Uh, 40 carats worth of this outer worldly coloured gemstone. It's your neon appetite. 40 carats. Your price today is just £9.95. <laughs> wow, was those. That's astonishing for a totally and absolutely natural gemstone, which has been expertly shaped, expertly faceted, expertly drilled and stranded. £9.95 for all of that work for something that, honestly, you can't really replicate. You can't really find anything that looks similar to this, can you? Do you know things like, um, let me think, so things like 
you garnet now the garnet wow big name amazing garnet especially like the ruby rich red garnets stunning amazing but you can get like onyx that looks quite similar can't you you could get even agate that looks quite similar Neon Appetite doesn't have anything like that. If you want Neon Appetite, there is no substitute, and it's yours today for a beautiful price of just £9.95. Now, Gemma Crow, your little love, I'm heading over to you in Hi. moments. Tell me about how it was to work with this kit. Oh, just it's just gorgeous. Again, it's just lovely. It's got all my favourite things in. So, um, yeah, easy to work with. I made more than I more than I wanted to because it's very hard to stop once you start. So, so yeah, I absolutely loved it. It's wonderful, isn't it? This is your uh, copper, your raw copper sheet that we have here for you. Raw copper sheet that we have here. Now this is what we saw that brand new tool used with earlier on. This is sturdy, isn't it, Gem? Very. Yeah. Real sturdy, which it, now I'm actually holding it is making it even more amazing that that tool went through. Yeah, no, yeah, it does like butter actually really easily. But it's astonishing, isn't it? It's gorgeous. So you're getting a sheet of your raw copper when you see exactly how we've used this, you're going to just be blown away. Gemma's done it wonders. Six inches by six inches, this raw copper sheet. You're then getting two reels of your raw copper wire. Now I'll be honest with you, you know we sold out of the other kits, well, I've actually got less of this. I had 150 of that first kit. I've got 57. I know, I've not got, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. I know, I know. I love when Gem just went, is that it? <laughs> yeah, I know, there's nothing I can do. I'm sorry. I had 150 of the first kit, that sold out. I've got 57 of this, so I'm just, that's your heads up, okay? You know I'm gonna do you an amazing price, so you may as well get on the phone. Uh, I've got 10 meters worth here of your 0.4, again, raw copper wire, and your 0.8 raw copper wire today. So you've got two reels there. I've then got loads of gemstones, and <laughs> how did you get Ruby? No, I love it. Maybe. Yeah. I absolutely adore this strand. This is a very you strand of ruby as well, isn't it, actually? It is, yeah. Gorgeous, deep, matte finish to these. 80 carats worth of these matte finish nuggets. They are from around 6x5 to 11 by 6 on these. 20 centimetre strand, genuine ruby. That's astonishing, isn't it? As well as that, you're going to be getting your aqua marine. Just thinking, when's the last time I saw aqua marine? Yonks. That's a technical time frame, obviously. <laughs> uh, you've got 110 carats worth of this aqua marine in these graduated medium nuggets from around 10 by 9 all the way to 18 by 10. Blimey, some big pieces. Aquamarine, of course, very tranquil gemstone, very relaxing gemstone. It is your gemstone that is notorious and synonymous with the sea, with the ocean, with all those beautiful, calming, calming places and locations. Gorgeous aquamarine in a real archetypal colour, which I absolutely adore. You then have got your appetite. Now, our appetite is known for inclusions. It's like emeralds. Uh, they're absolutely accepted, absolutely accepted and completely acceptable. Hardly any in this, though. Eye clear, definitely eye clear to me. Um, this is your sky blue appetite, and they are four by th uh, four, two, three mil, um, and they are 30 carats worth. So they are your perfect round, some around the four mil, some around the three mil area. Can't believe how much clarity you've got in that. Get it home to really appreciate it, truly, that's astonishing. That is a serious quality strand. Let's face it though, actually, if this wasn't high quality, we wouldn't be pairing it with things like Ruby, would we? So that I should have expected ridiculous quality from all of these strands as soon as I saw that Ruby. And lastly, but by no means leastly, look at this golden rutile quartz. This with that imperial topaz, ooh. That would work stunningly, wouldn't it? And you've got 25 carats worth on this strand. So we're around two by one to five by three. So a lovely subtle graduation on this, but you could really highlight that obviously. Um, on these little plain rondelles that we have here. 
Um, you've got four strands here which work beautifully together. I'll be honest, for me, it's not necessarily the, something that my eye would naturally put together, which is nice because they work so well. I probably personally wouldn't think about it and a lot of you at home probably wouldn't. But look how well they work together. The work's been done there for you really, hasn't it? It truly has. Gorgeous ruby there with that beautiful matte feel to it. That stunning luster externally of the aqua marine. That gorgeous internal clarity, which is astonishing with that appetite. And then you've got this almost amber-like internal organic nature of the Rutal Quartz. It's just exceptional. All of that working perfectly with 10 meters of your 0 0.8, 10 meters of your 0 0.4, and that raw copper sheet. I've only got 57. People have already bought some though at this price. £38, £65. I've already had people buying it at that price. That's because you guys at home know I'm going to do you a ridiculous deal. That's because you guys at home know that if you check out, everyone pays the same. So congratulations to everyone who's already purchased this. You're not going to be let down by this amazing price crash. Yours today for just £27? And 95 pence. I went so high, only the dogs could hear me at the end then. <laughs> oh my gosh, what do you think of that price point? It's a very good price point. And if you look at how much sheet copper is, it's, it's very expensive. Of course it is, because yeah. the price of copper is going up and up and up yeah. and has been for years, hasn't it? I mean, I, I've only ever, before here, I've only ever bought it from scrap and I'll buy scrap pieces. But I'll pay um, 10 pounds, well, it's actually 20 because I have to pay ten pounds for a kilo to be delivered as well. So I'll pay I'll get sort of lots of little pieces of this, probably totaling just a bit more, but it's scrap, so it's not big pieces. I can't make big bangles or anything like that with it. So it's just and I'll pay course. twenty pounds just for that. You know, so you can you can really see the value in it, even just for the copper. So even just for the copper, yeah. seven pounds ninety five more, you're getting yeah. Ruby <laughs> Ruby and appetite, oh, what? gorgeous. The stones are, it's really nice to put together because with the, with the copper you make quite rustic looking jewellery, I think. Well, I do anyway, that's what I do with mm. it. I, I don't highly polish it, I, you know, heavily patina it and things. Mm. But it, it sort of, these stones sort of tie in with that feel because they look very authentic. You're so right. Like you would have found in, in old jewellery, not quite cut perfectly. Or, yes. You know, and, and not polished, like the ruby's not polished. It's, uh, I've got way over half my stock gone. I'm just showing you, I'm spinning you around this because if you, if you, for you sneaky, sneaky people out there, you might be able to work out what this says. Have a little look. <laughs> what does it say? B E A, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it's so You've sort of used the textured, the, the letters yeah. as texture, but it's actually say something as well. Yeah. It says beautiful. I love that. I, d I don't know about you, like my mum, for example, she won't wear anything that says mum on it. Or, you know what I mean? No, She's I know what you mean. She, won't, she doesn't like that sort of thing, but yeah. I could texture her a necklace that looks quite um, sort of modern. But, and it could say mum, but just with texture rather than, so you can sort of hide messages in your jewellery like that. So it's quite nice. So, so, such a good idea. I absolutely adore it. I really, really do. How funky is that necklace? Need to let you know I've got a quarter of my stock left on this kit. Only a quarter. Got to be quick. Really got to be quick. Uh, this is just fab. Thank you. I really enjoyed working with it. Did you? Yeah, really enjoyed it. And I would wear it every piece I've made myself. So it's, a, it's very me, this kit. It's exactly what I would make for me. It's the way that this, this is patinaed. We're going to be looking at that today yes, as well, we are, aren't we? Yeah, we are. As well as shaping it and putting the components together. Yeah, and texture. And texturing. Because let's face it, I think texture here, you have gone for it, haven't you? You've mm. shown why people do texture so much. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it, it gives it a totally different look. Yeah, and to be honest, it's a waste of time patinering a flat piece of metal because it, it, what we want to do is create a contrast between the shiny and then the dark. Get and it. you can't get a contrast unless you have a texture put into that metal. So wire weaving, yes, easy because you've got crevices naturally, but 
with copper, you have to put a texture in in order to patina. Mm. Mm. It's just absolutely beautiful collection and actually for a guest designer to say that they would wear all of the pieces is a rarity because obviously the guest designers are making all the time. Yeah. We're yeah. giving you things that you haven't actually chosen yourself. We're nope. giving you kits that you don't know, you don't expect. So for you to say something like that, you know, it does go to show you how amazing it is. And what about at that price? That's a remarkable price. I mean, I would sell just the bracelet at maybe £30. So, you know, I could make my money back, have everything left. And, uh, you know, I had a whole another bracelet left out of that sheet, out of everything I've made, a whole another section for a bracelet. Could have made about five, six more pairs of earrings. Mm. So all out of that one sheet of copper, I had so many pieces. And not small pieces, are they? No. So it You're goes right. a long, long way. It does go a really long way. Uh, Twenty-seven ninety-five. I've got how many left, love? Because oh my goodness! Oh. Right, I've got way less than twenty left, and I've got five more. So I'm actually in the teens now. I'm in the teens on this now. Be super, super quick. Really check out your baskets. Twenty-seven ninety-five. Right, I, ju I just wanted to show you something before I started. I think Ryan may have photographed this anyway, but I've just marked up this sheet of copper um, just to show you where the different components from this kit have come from. Okay. So you can see I've got the pendant that's been cut from this corner here. So I've cut that one in preparation. Okay. There's the bangle down there, the bracelet. Right. So it's just, I've marked it with marker pen and roughly drawn the lines and that's where I would cut. Any and specific pen that you need? So you well, don't want it to be permanent, obviously. Yeah, I, use do per I don't generally use a permanent because I use uh, sandpaper anyway after. So Great, you can so you, have to worry. you can mark on it, write on it. I mean, it's very often if you make something like this, I recommend you number it one, two, three, four, five, six, and take a photo because when you cut them out and you don't know the front, and the back, it's very it's like a puzzle. You know, it's like krypton, very it's like a krypton factor. <laughs> so I I've got like various pictures on my phone of layouts good that tip. I use. So that's really when um, this section here would then be. So this is the necklace, the you know the multi-piece necklace. This section, sort of in there, would be that asymmetric necklace with oh, the dangles the on. One with the dangles on, so it'd yeah. be this one here for that middle section. Yeah. Would be this one, and then I've got various little bits of earrings cut out and all sorts. So yeah, it, you know, it goes on and on and on. You can That's get so cool, much out of one sheet. So I just wanted to show you that before we started. Brilliant! Thanks for showing us that. Right, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to cut. We're going to cut a piece first. So we're going to do lots of little techniques and then get onto the patina if that's okay. So Fab. I taught you. I'm going to go right through this pendant. Everything we do will be around this pendant here, so you can make that one in its entirety. But you can apply all the other techniques that I've used. Okay, so um, ruler and pencil, or ruler and markers, and um, something you definitely need. I love your ruler. <laughs> yeah, I've got loads of lovely shapes in this one. I love it. Great, it's cool that. It's Tom's. I pinched it. Sorry, Tom. Bless him. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm just going to mark out, and it's this um, particular pendant is four and a half centimeters by five centimeters. It looks um, a lot narrower than that, but that's because I've um, bent it. You know, I've yes, sort it's of domed. I've domed it slightly. Got you. So five. So just marking it. Pencil will mark on it temporarily if that's what you want to use. So that'd be okay. Mark your lines. I mean, you can just cut freehand if you want, but I, I mean, I'm quite used to doing it, and I um, do sometimes cut freehand, and often wish I never. Okay. <laughs> because I always slightly go off, and then you have to trim it and trim it. <laughs> so you might it, take the time to mark it first. Okay. So. I'm going to use the shears, which are brilliant. You've got two settings on, one for large hands and one for small hands. I'm using the large hand one, not necessarily because I've got large hands, but because it gives me a wider, you know... A, a wider mouth. A wider mouth, yeah, and gives me more leverage. And, yeah. you know, I'm not going to fib. It is, it is hard, cut, hard going cutting through it. So of course. Um, it's a very thick, you know, substantial it piece of metal. It is really substantial. Um, it makes light work of cutting through metal, to be honest. But it's not, you know, it's not something that is easy. So I, I wouldn't want you to think it is. Um, so right into the deepest part of the shears and cut down as far as you can go and then slide along slightly and cut a little bit further. Okay. I can't believe how easily these are actually going through that. They, they do go through. Because that is so, so thick. It is very thick and, and they are extremely good. Um, tin snips. I, I call them tin snips. That's what I've always used. Wow. And they are absolutely brilliant. 
they really are brilliant. And you can use them on this, but obviously you can use them on your aluminium. Um, yeah. You can use them with leather, actually, as I well. I use these you? with leather, yeah, because I haven't got the leather scissors yet. So <laughs> I use them on the leather. You can. Use them for anything. You could, really, couldn't you? If you do a lot of recycling at home, they're good for cutting up your cans. And, um, you know, if you recycle and make things out of your cans and That's good. things like that, That's they're, a good tip. they're great for that, cutting up. You can do bottles. rope with this, you could use rubber with it. If you've got that rubber tubing we used to have, these are perfect for that as well. They're on your screen right now. Your price for the metal shears is just £14.95. Now, they, they're your stainless steel metal wire shears, £14.95. Loads of you coming in for these. I've not actually got many of them left. The kit is sold out, by the way. Oh. Sold out completely. Are you well, about I'm that? not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm really sad that it was only 57 Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's all we had. I know. It's all we had. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Well done for everyone who got it, though. Okay, so, you know, I'm saying it's not easy. It's just I don't want people to get home and say, oh, it's actually harder than I thought. It, it does take some pressure, but you can do it much easier than you do it with any other tool anyway. Brilliant. Okay, so there's my shape cut out. It's quite neat. There's no, because they're so sharp, you don't get a really jagged edge either, mm -hmm. which is nice on the safety point of view. That's good. Okay, so then what you need to do is, I'll just pop that one to the side got one no I won't I use this one then you mark out all the way around so for this one I'm gonna thread gemstones across and I'm gonna dangle some pieces from the bottom okay so to mark it out I generally um, take my ruler again and you'll have a rough idea of how far apart you want the spacings so I take my ruler and then just do some lines so let's say every half a centimeter so just mark lines and you'll see why I'm doing lines in a minute. So if I just do, <laughs> just elongate that slightly. Right, so I'm using this, which is on our website, which is an amazing, I don't know if we've got it in the show. I might. I do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. I'm I've relieved. got the 1.6 by 2.4. I think it's the same. Okay. I think so. Well, it oh, would no, work it might the same, though, wouldn't it? It would do the same job. It would do the same Actually, job. I think that's a bit bigger. I'll just take one of those home with me. Should we get it out? Yeah. Yeah, look. Just take one of those home with me. Yeah, look. Yeah. Look, there you go. You can see it now, can't you? Bigger, this one. So that one's bigger, and then that one's smaller. Look at the point on that one. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. I know, but I don't know me left from me right, so I just have a crack both ways. Don't you should see me driving. I don't either, I'm terrible. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> left right. here and I have to go. Yeah, and people have to go. Uh, uh, that I way. say use your hands, please. Yes, yeah, just, use your hands. Just, do just it like point. This. Hey, National Left Day, Left Handed People Day yesterday. Is it? Yeah, mm. I didn't know until about six o'clock. I couldn't throw a party for myself. Are you left-handed? I am, I'm a lefty. I'm a bit left and right. Oh, are you? Because my, I think it's because my dad lost his right arm in right. an accident. Okay. And he does everything with his left. So anything he taught me, I learned with my left. I think that's why I'm a bit of both. Maybe that's why you're a little bit of both. Maybe. Meant to be very creative if you can use your left hand. I thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, this is the uh, hole punch that I have here. Actually, does yours have right tonight? No, it doesn't. No. Um, this is the Jewelry Maker branded. You can see here it's your 1.6 and your 2.4. So this isn't our original one. Maybe you have our original one, but maybe you're thinking of extending the family so you can thread more gems through, so you can do more looks like this. Now's your opportunity. This is one of our newest ones um, of, to the family. It's your double metal punch. We'll show you exactly how to use it now. We, as in the royal we, as in Gem Will. Um, and your price today for the double hole punch is just eight ninety five. It's again like the new tool we did before. Perfect circles gives you symmetry. Yeah, it saves you. I mean, it's just it's one of my favourite tools. This one because it just saves me getting a drill out every time I want to drill a hole. It's perfect. Fab. So Perfect. get your hands on it now whilst you can. It's the 1.6 and the 2.4 mil hole punch. She is coming in the bottom, but need to be quick on those because loads have gone. Right. The other nice thing about it is it does your measuring for you because if I slip it into the slot that far, that's that's this it's going to be that can... depth the whole way down. So I can do a row a point of holes, me. and it makes you know perfectly. You know, it's not going to be wonky then, don't you? Exactly. So I've done. If you remember, I said I'd drawn lines. Um, instead of dots for where I want my holes. Yeah, I can see that. Because the depth is taken care of by how far it goes into the punch. Fab. So all I need to know is sort of along the line where it's going to go. Now if my line's inside 
you know, if I've got a dot where I want the hole, I can't actually see it from the top. But if I've got a line, I can just make sure that that line lines up with the sort of centre of my punch. So I can pop that in, turn the handle. It is as simple as that. And considering this is a really thick piece of metal, just see how easily that pops through. And then um, untwist it. And there you go, you've got a perfect, perfect little circle. It is invaluable, this tool. So easy. It's such a time saver. And even the fact that that is so thick, again, you might look at this tool and think, oh, it looks quite cute and quite dainty. Oh, I don't, don't think that would be able to go through that really, really hard. But you've just shown exactly it how it has. It goes through like butter. It's like butter. so easy. And you like. get the scraps there, which you can use, can't you? Just about to say, these little tiny... The little bits, I generally keep hold of them because they're great for sticking onto polymer to give you that metallic element. And of course Perfect. you can bake them, of course. You can bake them, yeah. And they're set lovely. into, say, resin as well. Yes, nice yeah, bit. set into resin. They're oh no, it's sold lovely. out. Nearly. Ten left, twelve in baskets of the double metal, so it is a sellout. Shears, some left, not many. This is going to be a sellout in seconds. Well done, Norfolk. You've just got yourself one chicken. Uh, there's about fifth, about ten people are going to miss out on this right now. Uh, eight left, so be quick. Okay, so I've got my pendant here cut out. I've drilled all the holes or I've punched all the holes in it. So that's this is the bottom where everything's going to hang from. And I've got my two holes at the top, a bit wonky because I did those in a rush. Um, and that everything's ready okay. for me to go. So what I need to do now is tidy up these edges. And the edges are quite sharp. The corners are quite sharp. So um, to save me a bit of time when I'm um, sanding and filing, if I just take the very tip of the corner and trim it with my um, scissors, my um, snips, just trim them so that they're slightly rounded off for me to start with. That's saving you a bit of a job, isn't it? Yeah. Nobody, you know, nobody wants really harsh corners. I've done it on everything I've done there, taking the tips of the triangles off, because it can be quite pointy. Mm. Um, so from that point then, we want to start filing it down. And this is the bit you want to take your time over. This is the longest part of the job. Everything else is really quick. Okay. Um, but take your time over filing. So I'm using, we do, we do stock these as well on the website. And I'm using the flat file from our file kit. And I hold, if you've got a vice at home, great, because the hardest part about this is keeping your grip on the metal as you hold it. Okay. So the vice is perfect. You just slot it in and draw the file across. But I'm going to okay. show you the action. Okay, so um, hold it so that it's at an angle. So it's this like this. And I'm only going to file. I'm going to sort of dome the top lip. Okay. The back I just need to make smooth. Mm -hmm. um, but this one I want to dome so it, it sort of looks like it's, I don't know, like a manufactured, you know, like it's you've taken care of it. Mm. So it's not just a flat edge. So you go across. And it's a bit like sawing. You don't really put much pressure on. You just allow it to rub. Okay, so you can see I'm starting it off and I'm sort of at an angle like that and I'm at an angle to the piece. Okay, so you just give it a good, good rub. And you can be quite coarse. You can be quite, um, you don't have to be too careful because this is like the first stage. Okay. So you keep doing that until you feel that that is sort of enough. Um, and then around the corners, then you just take a bit more care and just rub around each of the corners. And I generally just do that against my fingers and push outwards, okay? Because that sort of helps it go around the corners. And then you could just rub along the edges. Okay, so once you've done that on all sides, I then go um, to the back and just very, very quickly, take off any sharp edges at the back yeah and then um, along each edge you rub along the edge as well okay and then that's smoothing the edge all right it's the type of thing that gives you that professional finish isn't it yeah yeah that's that's it and the, the more longer you take on doing your filing the you know the nicer a finish you'll get mm. nicer end result um, then to refine that filing sanding a little bit more we've got some um, lovely sandpapers you just work down your gauges. So if I take a coarse one first, just gonna snip myself a bit off. Okay. A coarser one first, and just rub along the edges. That's just taking it down even a bit more. You can see how the color, the metal yeah, changes much pinker. Yeah, you gorgeous. can see where you've 
you file so that's taking it right down to a raw state there and you file out all this sort of um, file marks because the you know the file's very coarse yes of course so you file the file marks out and then you just work down your grades of sandpaper until you're um, happy with the finish okay we're going to do this sort of stage again after we've textured so don't worry too much at this stage but that if you feel that edge it's lovely it's like a butter knife isn't it it's it really it's is but it's, it's like it feels a bit like the sort of side of a coin yes it's very smooth so smooth you know and very and easy to do okay so let's put some texture in so if I, I'm going to talk you through a few of the textures in this one piece because it's to save me doing lots of pieces okay so if we um, for this pendant I'm going to use the ball pine end of my hammer to create that sort of steel drum effect yeah and I see fairly self-explanatory but I'll show you anyway so you take your um, ball pine hammer and you literally just you really need to whack down quite hard to get a nice texture so you just keep whacking all the way around the edge the central area is going to be covered with gems so I don't need to focus on that too much um, the hammer you can see I'm allowing the hammer to sort of slip and um, slip off the edge and that's giving me a, a nice um, I don't know just uh, it looks authentic then it's not a square edge it's sort of bumpy which is nice nice noise that it is nice I know I'm quite sort of falling <laughs> into that then <laughs> when you do this don't don't be tempted to try and aim your hammer in specific places okay. uh, because what you'll get is you'll get a series of dots rather than a dappled so just let it do its own so thing. So let it do its own thing and, and hammer in the same area lots of times to get it really um, roughed up then and really overlapping. Can I ask you something? Have you used this hammer before? What, which one's that? I know, I've never even seen it before, but feel it. Wow, no I haven't That's used got a one. weight to it, hasn't it? It has. I'm wondering, would that work even better possibly on the raw copper because it's so thick it may it may indeed I mean the ball pine end um, is obviously larger is larger it? so we're gonna have a much more um, larger texture then uh, less dappled so it might be more suited for larger pendants the bigger pieces um, or bangles you know I can see that oh. this is definitely suited for doming though and shaping it'd be very nice that one oh, but sometimes this is a little bit small for doming you you get too much of a um, it hits a certain area too it too strong in one area whereas this one you'd spread out the, I see the what weight. you mean and then what about your, your flattened side here but that's nice it's slightly smaller this one's slightly smaller than ours yeah it is so our, this is your standard, standard one, one. Um, and I think that would probably be really nice for flattening because the edges are slightly curved they are ever so slightly aren't they and it's slightly smaller so yeah I would say that that's because I'm thinking that because it's a smaller surface area and because this is much weightier is than that heavy. one isn't it yeah. much weightier than that one yeah if you needed to perfectly flatten a, a surface and you wanted it a really really hard metal essentially if you mm. had a really hard metal that you did want to flatten this for me would do that better because yes. it's a heavier weight over a smaller space yeah so it's it, going to isn't it, it? yeah it's going to distribute better that's amazing isn't it yeah and I would say if you can have that one keep that one for flattening and yeah. doming don't texture with that one flattening and doming yeah and and keep that one separate in fact it's, it's probably a good idea to have a different style hammer to keep separate so that you instantly recognize it by picking it up that's a really good point actually so maybe you've got one, one that looks a bit like Gemma's which looks like it has been through the mill it really several has. times it has. Got spat back out of the other side, then got trodden on by a horse, a stampede of horses, and then ooh, ooh, just found its way to your jewellery uh, bag because that's that's been worked, it has. hasn't it, Gem? These have definitely got their benefits. These old ones have got their benefits. Absolutely. <laughs> so maybe have one like Gemma's, and then have one for just nice your flattening, one. nice clean one, so no yeah. texture, not going to ruin any metal, and then one for your doming, perfect. Eight ounces, ooh, uh, ball and hammer with your beech wood handle. Your price on this today is just, ooh, wow, that is very good. That is a very good price. It really is. 
I've never seen this. How have I not seen this before? No, I don't understand. What? Don't say that to me. <laughs> it's new. <laughs> That's why I've not seen it. Because it's new. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I should have given you a heads up about this. Let's rewind. Can we rewind the show until about five past one? And I can just repeat it. New! Two new tools! Two new tools! I could use this new tool with me other new tool. You could. That we're gonna recap new toolness for you in a bit. Oh, there's loads of you coming now. All of you are like, yeah, I've not seen that before. Weird, must have missed it. It's new! Wait, we're not meant to do things at 595 anymore, are we? No. Okay, we got an email sent through. True, honest truth. You know, I'd never mess about with you. Honest truth, we got an email through a while ago saying you can't sell anything that's under 6.95 unless it's like one of those crazy jewel and normal shows like yesterday. You can't sell anything under 6.95 by itself unless it's a DVD. That's it, you can't. Mm. Unless it's a brand new product when you're allowed to. So, when you see this in the future, you will more than likely be seeing this paired with other stuff. You'll be seeing this in a bundle. You'll be seeing this with things like the metal plate, which I'm sure a lot of you actually already have. Very good price. Oh, brand new. Good if you want it now and you just want to buy this and you don't want the other bump, you don't want the wire bundled with it or the block bundled with it, which will be happening from now on, because we're only allowed to sell products under 6 95 by themselves if they are brand spanking new. So that's the only reason you're getting this alone now. You won't in the future. This will be bundled with stuff. So if you want it now, get it right now. 595 new hammer. Ooh. Right, I'm gonna quickly hammer this one down so I can patina it. Get texturing. Yeah. So I'm being very naughty and having my fingers on the um, block, but I do, when I teach, I do tell people to keep their thumbs off the block and their piece on the block. So less likely to hammer. Tell hammer yourself. That's a very good point. Right, you know you're, you're doing it properly if your cheek shake when you're hammering. <laughs> That's an amazing tip. <laughs> you, need, you know you're putting the right amount of pressure in because you can't just tickle it. You've got to really whack it. And if your cheeks are going like that when you're doing it, it's about right. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, boy, oh boy. Wow. Names have gone off the screen twice. Hardly any left. No, it. Okay, leaving that one there for a minute. I'm going to show you another texture. Okay. So the texture that I've used on the necklace at the end, the, the triangular one, um, I think everybody's asked me this morning, hey, did you get that texture? It's gorgeous, isn't it? Um, I didn't use any special hammer. I used that, our original ballpine hammer. Um, and, and I wouldn't recommend doing this with your new hammers. So um, I've cut, I've, this is ones I've been cutting out of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the very edge of my hammer. This one, the benefit of this one is got a really sort of sharp edge. Yeah. Not sharp, like we we'll cut you, but it's a, it's a very um, good angle on there. So you've got a, a ridge then. So it's um, an odd angle to hit down that, but you hit from the side and you just check, pop your hammer down at that angle. So, so as you hit down, you're getting these little That's striations amazing. rather than marks. And if you keep your um, turn your metal rather than your hammer, um, you get them all in the same direction, which is the look I wanted in this necklace. But because I wanted each triangle to go in a different direction, but if I wanted to, I could then turn my metal and go in the opposite direction, I can get a nice cross hat as well. So you can see a couple of a couple of different textures going on there. Look at that, it's amazing. I'd have never have imagined you'd done it like that. So there you go. So you can see at the bottom I've crossed crossed them over and at the top area there I've just got these little lines in. I love that. So that's as easy as it is to create that texture. <laughs> now my hammer, this is my old one where I've been I used to with the metal punch, with the letter punches and everything, so I've got all these little marks. So if I'm to hammer with actually with just this hammer, 
then I'll actually get imprinting in slight and in slight indentations actually in my metal from my um, messed up hammer. <laughs> so oh, really? Yeah. So my hammer. And you can see I've actually got <laughs> quite a, quite a nice little texture. And Just because if you through the mill stampede of horses. Yeah, because it's a nice and it's hard mm. to show there. But as we put patina, patina on, you'll, you'll see. be able to see it. Yeah, just it's very subtle, but I actually really like that. Okay, Sometimes really it's what you want, what you need. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly shape this before I put it in a patina. So you can see it's where I've hammered it. When you hammer, what happens is you stretch. You can as you push down, what you're doing is the f the top surface is sort of contracting and the bottom is expanding. Okay. Okay. So you're getting a natural curve upwards of the side you're hammering. So what we want to do is because we want it to curve outwards from the neck, we want to hammer the back now to get that to get that curve. Okay, so um, if it was a circle, I would try and use a dome in block if I had one, but because it's a, a square, I haven't got that. No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my piece of metal at this angle to my to my steel block, and I'm going to tap with the ballpoint end of my hammer move that down the ballpoint end of my hammer down onto it and I'm just I'm not doing it uh, really fiercely or hardly um, I'm just going to do it gently gradually to get it to start bending in the direction I want okay so I'm, that's that side for a minute I'm going to work on the other side I'm going to take it in turns so that I don't go too overboard on one side and have to undo my work you can see I'm just I'm not actually hammering onto the block really I'm hammering just where Just the metal starts it. to raise from the block. Yeah. Okay. So I'm starting to get a quite a nice gradual curve oh, yeah. in there. Okay, and once I've got those edges, that, that's the most acute curve I want is on those edges. The central part I want quite subtle. So what I'm gonna do for the central part is I'm actually gonna hammer down the center to create that so to make it bend. So hold and just hammer down the center. And you can see where you need to hammer, where you need to stretch it, where you need to bend it. As you know, just by eye, you'll see where it needs to be. So I'm striking it. And sometimes just to get the shape more where I want it, I'll sort of hold it at angles um, to get to get it exactly how I want it. And there you go, I've sort of shaped it without, because it is very difficult to bend with your fingers. Of course, it's, it's so firm. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not the easiest to do. And that's how you shape the edges of things. That's wonderful, right. isn't it? And the great thing is with this piece, of course you're stringing across, so you're not gonna yeah. see the bit in the middle no. where you focused it. No, that's right. So when you um, hammer from the back, it's you're not gonna see any of that odd no. texture. Of course, that's Fab. Right, so um, now attaching in the gemstones, I've done that all before patina. So we're uh, taking my um, finer gauge, which is the 0.4. The 0.4. This kit has sold out, I'm afraid to say. And I'm getting close to this as well being that way. Um, five pounds and 95 pence on there. Uh, this is your eight ounce ball hammer, brand spanking new. I've got, it looks like about, I don't know, 80 in baskets or something ridiculous. There's loads in baskets. You've gone off my name twice. Uh, you've gone off my name twice. What? You've gone off my board twice, your names, and each side of a name is like 70. So I've got 70, 70, and you've gone off my screen because I can't even see all 70, but I know a full screen is 70, so they've gone off. But then I've only got two name lists, so I can only see two lots of 70, and I know that there's loads more. Basically, I've sold hundreds. It's going quick. Be quick because it's brand new so as i said sometimes with brand new things we don't know whether or not you love it we like dip our toe in the water first just to try and get a few and get a gauge of whether or not and how much you like it and um, so we probably won't have had as many in as this which would mean if you don't get it now you might miss out which means you might have to wait months for us to get more in may as well just get it now anyway at that price and don't forget 5.95 because it's brand new that's the only reason i'm allowed to sell it by itself from now on more than likely you'll just be seeing this bundled so if you just want the hammer alone, 5.5 today and today only. Right, so what I've done is I've taken a piece of 0.4 wire and I've just threaded it through for now, just thread it through one of those holes I've made down the side and just hold on to that at the back. We'll tidy that up after. 
and then you thread as many gemstones as you need to sort of span the width of the pendant. So um, this one's difficult to do in advance because you can't thread and you can't thread the wire through and put the gems on because they won't go through. So I'm sorry, I have Course. to thread. No, don't be silly. It's okay, so once that's the width you want it, they span in the whole width of the pendant. You then take it through, take the wire through the hole on the opposite side. Just thread it through and pull it taut. And then at the back, run the wire down, down the back. So that one's just staying out of the way for now. Down the back, up through the next hole along. Ah, so it's just one continuous piece of wire then? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I've got lots of joins then at the back. Yeah. Through the next hole along, thread on your next um, right. span of gemstones. Mm -hmm. And then if we look at the back of this one. Yeah. Oh, I've pinned it. Yeah, draw I've me pinned it because it was a bit long. Do this. There we go. Um, you can see how it just, it just runs like that all the way down the back. And then I finish with two little spirals just to stop those wires from pulling through. See that doming there? It's fab, isn't it? So that one's the patina on the back hasn't been rubbed off at all, so you can see sort of how dark it can go. Yeah, it's fab, isn't it? And it can go darker than that, but right. So if I just you need your elongated bust for this one, don't you? You do. That's it. I didn't have one. You didn't have one. We had that before. Did you see it? The black velvet elongated bust. Eight ninety-five. It was. Mm. Might have a couple left. Might. Why don't you have a look? Right, I'm just gonna I'm just tucking those wires in so I can pop it in the patina. I don't need to do any more than that. I can show you exactly what we need to do. So I'm just gonna wrap that for now. Tuck it out of the way. Right then, patinas. I'm excited for this. Yeah. Gemstones on and then we can patina, which actually is something that you might not necessarily think. Ah, there are things that you cannot patina and I tell you who's much better versed in this than me, and that's Sammy Fletcher. She yeah. she's got a list. I think she compiled a list on her webs on her Facebook or website. Okay. But I do know you cannot put rubies, no. opals, pearls, no. don't put anything like anything that. Anything that's slightly porous, Nothing really. Nothing porous, yeah. And if Definitely in doubt, don't pearls. do it. No. Add it in after. But y the gems you got in this kit that we've used here, that retail quartz is obviously fine. Yeah, and everything everything is fine. The aquamarine's even fine, just not the just ruby. Just not the ruby. Not the ruby. And don't take any risks with ruby. Okay, folks. It's, a, it's against the law. Okay, so preparing to patina is a big part of the part of the process. Um, so what you need to do is I use something called I don't know if that's branded. I use something called um, ammonia mm -hmm. um, to clean my pieces. I, d I don't know if we want. I'm not going to do it here today because it smells really bad. I'm going to have enough of a bad smell with the with the sulphur. <laughs> no, we're still using the sulphur. Ben's just gone to me. Oh yeah. bless her. Thanks, Gemma. No, we're still using the sulphur, <laughs> babe. Just not the ammonia. No, no not the oh. ammonia. Right, so what you need to do, the reason you clean it with the ammonia or um, something really, a degreaser of some nature, because your hands are covered in grease, there'll be oils in the workshops where this metal's cut. Of course. There's, you know, oils, oils all over. Oils everywhere, yeah. And wherever there's oil, it lacks as a resist, so the patina won't take, okay. or it won't take as well anyway, and you'll end up with patches. So always thoroughly clean with a toothbrush, um, even a scouring pad thoroughly clean it off with a degreaser and I, I find ammonia is the best one. The other good thing about using ammonia is that it ha it also affects the patina so you get a much more ready tinge to your patina oh, which is actually nice. it's all sorts of things as you experiment that you'll find will colour help your patina take on a different colour different hue. Okay. So where do we get the ammonia from? I got mine on Amazon. Yeah. And or online eBay. you can find them online. Or Other websites are of course right. available. <laughs> Uh, but you can get them online, and I presume you can get them in uh, household. Yes, I, th I think ammonia yeah, is more likely to get in a chemist yes, you're than right. you are in, in the supermarket. Yeah, fab. So, yeah, get that. Um, or any degreaser, like I said, you can use something else. Okay. Um, the other thing you'll need to have to hand is you'll need a neutralizer, and that, for that, you need a bath of um, baking soda something to neutralize it so what I do is take a, a tub the same size as the one I've been patina in and I have it ready there with baking soda in and water just the same and what kind of ratio will we talking Le say a tablespoon to sort of this quantity table if it was this quantity so what's that about 500 mils yeah then, probably then a, a tablespoon to that so not loads that's no hard. not loads it's just enough to neutralize and um, what it does it neutralizes the, the um, liver of sulfur for one so it can stop that smell from 
keeping smelling, you know, yeah. it stops it. Because um, once it's gone off, it doesn't smell anymore. Um, but also it's nice to stop the reaction happening straight away. So the reason you want it at hand is, once I've dunked this, I like the color I've got, then I want to keep it that color. So I dunk it in the, in the solution with baking soda and it stops it okay, in its fact. tracks. Good, eh? Is everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. Masks on? They're all ready. Right. Now, obviously, the sulfur will smell. It is of smelly. course. Yeah. Of course. But it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it or it's gone off. That's just how it's meant to be, isn't but it? It only takes 27 seconds for the human nose to get used to a smell. So, it's fine. It'll be really bad for 27, 27 seconds. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> that is definitely it's a lie. It's true, it's true. I have smelt smells for much longer than 27 seconds. Yeah, but you'll find that you would have gone under your top and smelt your perfume and then come back out and put yourself through it again. So you might as well just stay in it, <laughs> embrace the smell, wait 27 seconds, and you won't smell it, it won't be as bad. It's true. Okay, good. I cannot wait for this already. <laughs> Set your alarm, Ryan, 27 seconds. All right, let's do this. Right. So great thing about this patina is it's um, a gel and it's stable. So it's not gonna go off, you can get rocks of it and it goes off. You never know how much you're gonna need. You can, can't break off bits, you always end up with waste. So for this one, it's lovely. Uh, like I said, here I've got about 500 mils. The more um, solution you put in, the stronger the patina will be or the faster acting. But a little bit, if you leave, as long as you're not really impatient, it will just take longer to to patina. Brilliant. So all I'm going to do is just give it a squeeze, a squeezy bottle, and you see there's one drop. Oh, you are using any. Two. Fine. I'm going to use three drops. My water in here is quite cool. It's not as warm as I would have it at home. Okay. Um, right, so water, the warmer it is, the quicker the reaction. Yep. However, you do not want it so warm that you've got vapours rising from your water because they're not nice to breathe in. They're no, not good of course for you. not. Um, so you don't want to do that. It's not dangerous um, to your skin or anything, but you, you really don't want to breathe the vapour of it in. Okay. Um, it's okay to smell it, but if it's, you know, Actually. If it's vaporized, it's not good for you at all. This is your extended life gel. It is your XL liver sulfur. Your price for a fluid ounce of gel. You've seen we only need three drops for this. Six ninety-five. That's a bargain because this is gonna keep you going and going and going, isn't it? Yes, it, it's gonna last for ages. I've done. I've had one bottle for about a year and a half, and I've done workshops with it and everything. So I hardly. I, what I generally do is make a batch and then patina together anyway, and you can do that all in wow. the same bath. Amazing. I'm adding. I'm adding more um, because I want to speed it up. That's the yeah, only just reason. That water's slightly cold because obviously and we had to get it before the yeah, beginning of the demo. It's, it's definitely cooled down. Okay. Okay. So I've just added a bit more just to speed. Just a little process. stir up. I'm going to put this one, this pendant that I made from earlier, in there as well. Now we can see the colour changing already on the pendant that I've been making. Gonna, oh look, already, look at the colour difference. Oh my gosh, one. look at that already. I don't know if you saw it going Wait. in. Yeah, hang on. Can you see, if we lift that up? Yeah, we use that Let me show you. So this is obviously the copper before. That's just been in seconds. This one went in second, yeah. Look at that. Okay. Well that's obviously, the, well this here is the yeah. colour of it before it went in, look. Yeah. So this is, this is a piece away from the same piece. Look how different that is. I'm going to leave it in a bit longer though, I want it to stay a bit longer. Um, you can, it's safe to put your fingers in, it's just that uh, I'm trying not to get my fingers too messy. Ugh, get out of the way. Right, this one, right, I'm sort of happy with that colour. That's a nice, I think I've achieved a lovely colour on this, on this um, That's beautiful. pendant. And um, you'll see the results of not washing it in a minute because um, you c I can already see my greasy fingerprints on there. Ah. The patina's not going to have taken very You're right. well. I'm going to take this out now and dry it off. I haven't got a solution ready, but it's fine. If I got to this point now, mm -hmm. and I did realise that I, I didn't have my... I hadn't done it beforehand, so I hadn't used the ammonia on it beforehand. Yeah. Could I still do it now? Yeah, get, just wash it with a toothbrush. Um, be very abrasive with it. Um, maybe get it quite lathery so you get in everywhere and then get just re-dunk it. Oh, I mean, easy. as you brush it, you're going to remove the patina 
that's it. You just anyway, yeah, of course. Yeah. But you can re-dunk and re-dunk, and in fact, you can l get nice, quite layered or dipped effect. I don't know well. if people have seen a Fox project I've done. It's on my website. You, uh, it's been gradually dipped so that it it sort of graduates from copper through to black. So you can you can do that. Right, I'm going to keep that one there. Let's take this one out as well. Oh, look how black that is. Nice. Wow. There you go. There's there's two very different. Both has been patinaed, but how crazy is that? That's like jets. Fab. Yeah. It's amazing. So I'll pop that. Let's keep that one out. I put that one to dry. Right, if somebody wants to go and tip that away, they can, because I don't think I'll need that now. So if you really want it out of your studio, it's free. It's free. Free to go. Okay. No, Ben, you cannot drink any of it. It is safe to um, dispose of in drains and sinks, and generally I will have um, um, neutralised it first. If you let it, if you just let it go like that, what you'll see is it'll start going cloudy. Yeah. Uh, and as it goes cloudy, that means it's gone off and it's neutralised itself, and it will yeah. do that eventually. Um, and then it's great to feed tomatoes and um, any any plant that likes acid soil. Oh, of course, because you do. You get sulphur soil and yeah. fertilisers for tomatoes, don't you? Yeah. So you can, that's yeah. brilliant. So it's really, really good for, for your garden. Fertilising your garden as well. Yeah. Oh, that is good. No waste here. Yeah. No, no, no waste. At all. Okay then, so for this, I haven't put quite a very deep texture in it because I was doing it quickly. Yeah. But let me just take, I'm just gonna slide that up. I'm not gonna take it off. Slide that up. And I'm using a piece of um, sandpaper. sandpaper, the finest one we do, um, I'm using. If you haven't, if you can't get hold of that, you can use. Let me find these nail polish buff uh, nail polish. Ah, things. you can get a pack of five for a pound, can't you? That's Something the ones. Like that and from you those can shops. you can sort of use these. They don't last very long, and they're sort of a one one trick pony. But that's um, you can use them if you haven't got our nice sanding blocks. You want something that's flat because um, I could use wire wool on here, and in heavily textured pieces, I'm I would use a wire wool. Um, but for this, where the texture is not very deep, I want something that's just going to skim the surface. Okay. So a flat um, board or a sponge like this is perfect. So if you if you now watch, I will just rub across the top, across the surface. Look at how that comes up already. And you can see it's just taking. I'm going in circular motions at the moment. It's just taking the most raised areas of the patina away. It almost looks quite animal print, doesn't it? It really does, you're right. Yeah. And you can really, you can, you know, keep that process going as long as, as long as you're, ha until you're happy with where, where it's ended up. Okay, so try and keep it flat. If I, if I was to really press down, yeah. I'm going to lose a lot of texture. Oh yeah, because of course you're going to go into the grooves then, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Which is not what you want. You want to be able to see that patina. So I'm not applying any pressure, just circling over the over the top you see how it picks up and it, then it's a case of um, you you do that and until you're happy with how it looks and it's really personal preference from this point on that's perfect for this because it really shows off the doming doesn't it does yeah because it, the light catches and it spans around yeah. it's almost a shield shape isn't it yeah it's, it's lovely and the earrings I've taken just a step further because they're quite small pieces I was able to curl the very corners in with my pliers yeah. does take a bit of um, strength in your wrist to do that but you can you know it depends on how long you've been doing this you'll you'll be able to curl that yourself as well to get your hands on this uh, liver of sulfur you've got to be quick hundreds gone <coughs> loads of people on the website with it in their baskets liver of sulfur is your extended life gel so as we said it's the gel like substance Perfect for use. It's going to last you time. Uh, Six ninety five for you today, but do check out those baskets. Last few left. Okay, how are we doing for time? What we? How long have we got? Pardon. Oh, I've got a couple of minutes. Got some texting for you as well. Okay. Well, um, for, to finish this pendant, um, all I've done is added some head pins through the top two holes here and made a loop and added chain, okay. and then just a few um, of the gems chain linked on the bottom so the rest of that is very very straightforward in fact I think it would look really nice on leather as well if you had a piece of leather cord I think that would work really nicely you're so right that even leather threaded through actually I'm gonna do that 
You spoke to yourself did, yeah. I did. <laughs> Jem does it again, inspiring herself on the back there. <laughs> I'm pleased with that, yeah, I'm going to do oh, some leather with that. Love that. Yeah. And this is your finished piece. How beautiful is that? Absolutely gorgeous. Because <laughs> you pinned it. It was gorgeous. Until it's Becky you... got her hands on it. Not oh, broken. <laughs> Just fell off the bust because it's pinned at the back. Should have got one of those elongated busts. Well, you. Should have got. Okay, so uh, there's the wire wrapped one here. So slightly. So this different, is from our first kits. Slightly different um, technique for um, getting into these weaves. So same again. You can rub over with your with your sandpaper. You can see how it picks up. Almost just picks up the weave. It so highlights it, which is lovely. Um, and you could be a lot firmer with sanding this because there you do want to get in and highlight all the pieces um, and also sanding in one direction helps with shine as well okay good so tip. if we go all in one direction we're sort of smoothing those um smoothing the metal out um yeah that's i mean that looks so exciting! This is the best bit, isn't it? I love this bit. <laughs> it really I could get is. really carried away. It's like um, obviously Natalie's in there doing a silver clay, but it's that same feeling, it isn't is, it? When yeah. you polish off your silver clay, you so go, Ooh. I'm, it's the only thing I can delay gratification with. Otherwise, I'm so impatient. But <laughs> making these, I'll make a big batch up, and you're just waiting to get it in the liver of sulphur. You put it all in and get it out, and then this bit, I could just sit and do this all day. I love just picking out the textures. It's amazing, isn't it? And every single one just unique. Yeah, it's, wow. it's really exciting. So for this, I would use a bit of wire wool to get in, in between. Get yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, these these pieces on the outside. Oh, look at that! Because they're so protruding, they just really polish up nicely that, and get some real contrast. Okay, so that's it. I think that's all you need to know. Really, it's nice. It's quite straightforward. It's not as intimate. It took me years to have a go at this because I was it? scared. Yeah, really. You know, you think chemicals, well, oh, a bit mm. scary, but really, not scary at all. Give it a go. Yeah, and it can't hurt you. You know, so have a go. It just smells a bit bad. That's all. But it's it. worth it. It's totally yeah. worth it. Come on, you can tell that straight away. Absolutely beautiful collection. Joan, thank you so much You're for showing welcome. us that. We've had some texts in. Check out those baskets at uh, Liver Sulphur Last Chance. Hi, ladies. Is it safe to dip a gemstone in the sulphur solution, please? Julie, it is for this kit. If you've got this kit, you can dip everything in it. Nope. The aquamarine. Not the ruby. I, I was getting there, Joan. Sorry, you said everything. I, you can dip everything in it. Aquamarine, except the ruby is what except I was going to say. Except the ruby, yeah. So in this kit, so essentially, you can definitely dip in aquamarine, rutile quartz, and your appetite. appetite. Yeah. Not rubies. Not rubies. No. Not rubies. They're too porous. And I would stay clear of emeralds. Oh, not opal. Not pearls. No. Don't do that. I don't. I'm sure. I'm not sure about emeralds either. I wouldn't. Oh no, because I wasn't. Because you can oil them. Yeah. And Anything you can porous. oil. I would suggest don't. No. So emerald would be one. Yeah. There is a few, and, and like I said, Sammy Wirebender Fletcher. Wirebender, Sammy Steampunk Lady Fletcher. She's uh, got a list, and she, you know, look on her. she's much more versed in it than me. I hope that helped. Another text in, squeeze one in. Uh, this one is. Uh, Great show and beautiful jewellery as ever, Gemma. Would you seal this afterwards and what with, please? Cracking question. Yes, I would. Um, well, I was saying at the start of the show, I always ask if somebody wants it sealed. So I will, unless I know something's going to be on show somewhere for a long time where the patina will take place, then I won't. I'll just store it in a plastic bag without any sealing. Yeah. Um, if it's for a commission, then people can then decide whether they want it varnished or not. Um, and that is a choice that often people will opt not to. But, however, if I do seal it, it's with either you can... I use a particular brand, so I, and I can't say it, because the only way of saying it is the brand. Right, got you. So I can't say it, but I'll put it on my Facebook page later. Um, but you can use like a Renaissance wax. There's lots of varnishes you can use out there for metal, so just search them up. I think Natalia may have a few listed on her page too that she uses for silver clay. 
Fab. Uh, and metal clays. So yeah, there, there, there are lots of things on the market. And yes, to keep it from going any further, I would patina. I would varnish. Varnish it. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Jen, thank you so so much Welcome. for all of that. I'm going to let you crack on with your challenge. To that to brand new tool. And um, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. I have got so many more goodies coming up. So you better not go anywhere because straight after this break, I have the most stunning cut in my eyes ever. I'll see you after this. Jewelry Maker are having a web exclusive clearance on our scale mail stock. Head over to the website now and grab yourself a bargain. Offer ends at midnight on Friday the 15th. If you're a Freeview viewer, you can now continue to watch the show live by switching over to Channel 64. Our brand new 24-hour channel is available to the majority of homes in the UK. So grab your remote now to make sure you don't miss a thing. This is an important announcement to all of our Sky TV viewers. From Tuesday the 19th of August, our Sky channel number will be changing from 655 to Sky 665. So remember to tune in to Sky 665 from August the 19th so you don't miss a thing. The colour of rose quartz ranges from a very tender pale pink to a delicate powder pink and can be transparent through to translucent. This gem has adorned ornaments and jewellery since ancient times. Known as the gemstone of true love, it's said that rose quartz allows you to get to know your true self and to love that true self in all its beauty. And this is that stunning gemstone in the most stunning of cuts. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. My name's Rebecca Redican and I love the concave cut gemstone, especially when it is of this astonishing quality. Oh my goodness. Look at the work that has gone into this delectable strand. This is, oh, uh, let's just take a moment, okay? Remind me of my price point, love. Okay, guess what? I'm going under 30 pounds on this today. I'm going to price slash it. I'll be honest, putting it out there. 
under 30 pounds originally, just under. I'm going to price crash it because I've got so few left. Bear that in mind. Get yourself on the phone, 0800 644 655. And whilst you're all doing that, let's just take a moment to enjoy this gemstone in this beautiful cut. Faux prong set this into a pendant, charge 40 quid and your friends will be getting a bargain per one. 40 pound per one, easy peasy. Look at the colors. That most beautiful salmon tone. Drink in that colour. Let's just enjoy this most fantastic cut on an exquisite example. Let's just take a moment to really enjoy this while you all get on the phone. Congratulations to the people who already own this right now because you've already checked out your baskets, you've already rung in on the telephone line. You know that you will be uh, getting yourself an absolute bargain. The work that has gone into this. They wouldn't have bothered if the quality wasn't there. They wouldn't have. That already shows you. You know the um, rose quartz I had on earlier, that amazing, crazy, crazy, astonishing quality rose quartz I had on earlier on, that brand new strand. Um, that was this sort of quality, but they've gone a step further and concave cut this. Now, the concave cut is my favorite cut of gemstones. And not just the favorite cut we do here on Jewelry Maker, actually. My favorite cut in general. If you haven't had a look at concave cut online, have a little look, just search it, concave cut artistry, and you can see they do it in two directions, and it's crazy. Now, the concave cut, if I just talk you through this, I will show you one individual. Don't. Each of these facets, where the light spans across, they're not flat, like on other gems that you might be thinking. These are concave, so they're not flat, they're bent into a loop. Should be able to see that now. Now that's all done by hand. That is just done by a lapidarist working on your wonderful facets that have got, look at that. Can you see it spanning the light is? Now let's just enjoy what that cut does to this with the light. That cut literally plays with the light. Watch this, just watch him. So can you see the colors changing actually almost of the gemstone, isn't it? Now look at that fire in the middle, coming to life now, coming to life, then the light hits the facets. I'm gonna go all the way around so you really get, look at that, wow, look at that change there. This is all due to that wonderful facet work on this. Oh, look at that. Now the concave cut is absolutely astonishing because it gives you, it offers to you um, benefit to the gem itself. So it exaggerates things such as the brilliance, the internal fire, the life, but then it also hides things as well. So even if you get a gemstone that's maybe got a little bit of an inclusion in it or you want to hide it a bit, you can do that with this concave cut because the light enters, it plays ping ball so much that it's hidden. You can see that light, look at that rainbow hitting the corner there. You can see it, aren't you? That's what you get from that cut. Now, all of those benefits actually are highlighted on this slide. They're at the base of this slide. It also tells you exactly how this is created. So you'll see here, this is how it's crafted. Now, there's a picture there that I think is quite important. The picture in the center, now that is giving you kind of a stereotypical cut, isn't it? You've got the table there at the top, which is the largest center section. You've then got the bit that goes down to the girdle, which you have to change the facet for completely. And then that goes down and levers down all the way down to that culet. Now, Look at that picture and look at how every single bit of that picture, every single bit of the facet has to change completely. 
Now imagine that, but instead of it being flat, you've got to make that concave by hand. Now, how do they do that? It's literally put on a lathe and they have to. This is why it takes years, lifetimes work, people work for this. That's because obviously I'm gonna exaggerate now so you can see, but on a lathe, your lathe is spinning here. You have to, for each one, get the perfect scoop. The same every time, because if you didn't do it the same, if you did one slightly too shallow or slightly off, you'd be able to see it, it'd be completely ruined, the concave cut itself wouldn't work. Every single one of these is hand faceted on a lathe, individually, one by one, by someone who has worked for many, many, many years. It is such a beautiful effect. And in fact, if I show you the concave artist's skill, there's just a little bit about it. Um, this goes to show exactly what I mean by the concave. So that picture that looks like a kite, essentially, doesn't it? Imagine that's like your flat. But then actually the corner, the bottom corner one, is the concave. So that's to be done by hand. Now, you see the loop at the bottom there? It looks like a D shape. If that was even slightly off or slightly uneven, the concave cut wouldn't work. They'd have to throw the whole piece of gem away. I'm about to price drop my favorite strand, my favorite cut. I love it. You love it. Get it home to really appreciate it because this comes alive in natural light. Not lights like this. In natural light, it comes alive even more. Your price today for all three I told you it'd be under 30. I did not let you down. 24.95 is the original price. I'm about to price drop. Get on the phone. Congratulations, all you people. You've already got it. Everyone pays the same price today because I've only got a few left. I'm able to do a never seen before. Beautiful. 19.95. People train 10. 15, 20 years to be able to create this. The tiniest percentage, in fact, it doesn't even make it to a whole percent of people in the world can create this. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.000000 recurring a bit. I think there's about nine noughts. One percent of people in the world can create this cut. What? What do you think of this concave cut and this beautiful strand, lovely Gemma Crow? Oh, I think concave cut is exceptional. It's really is, so, it? so beautiful. Really is, isn't it? And that, that cut's lovely. It's like, it's like pendant and earrings there, but just slightly more contemporary than your pear drop, isn't You're it? Right. It's just, you know, taking it to a different edge. You are absolutely right. Yeah, if you were like to it. work with this, what would you do and how much would you be looking at selling it for? Because obviously you've got to take that into account. I know we've just price dropped it. You don't have to when you're pricing it. You can, you know, keep it at the original price and people are still getting themselves a deal and a bargain. But what would you be looking at? Because the work that goes into this is astonishing, isn't it? Well, I think I would honour that work by putting it with really high-end findings. So I think I would use sterling silver wire, yeah. um, sterling silver spaces, and maybe quite heavily. And then, then, then you can people can really see the value not just in the gemstone but in the precious metal as well. Yeah, I think you're um, right. So yeah, I would I would honour it with really beautiful, yeah, sterling silver, and then and then put a worthy tag on it. So the more beautiful the sterling silver, the heavier the sterling silver work. I'd say you can t probably take it up to seventy. 80 pounds even in the right environment yeah i can I completely get on board with yeah. that i was just thinking then you know i forget i forget who it is um one guest designer it might be two actually love 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 pink and copper together this with raw copper what do you think of that uh yes it that would it would be lovely it would be lovely less traditional so i think your sales yeah. on it would be your, your sale pitch on it would be slightly it's different yeah not of traditional course. no so um so yeah, you, I think you may have to work a bit harder to get the price tag you want to achieve yeah, yeah, yeah. with the raw coppers. But you know, rose gold plated sterling and silver oh, gorgeous. would be a Love fabulous that. combination Love too. That idea. Oh, it's stunning. Congratulations. Not many left. Check out those baskets. £19.95 for you today. Well done for getting that. You've got yourself quality that is lifestyle, <laughs> lifetime's work. It really is. Did you say number one? What's my price on this? I don't remember 
never seen this before on that price list. I wish I had. Gemma Crow. What is it? Is it emerald? Uh, sapphire. Sapphire. Look at the quality of that. That looks amazing. Oh my gosh, look at how many yellows you've got. Oh, rarest colour of sapphire, I'm sure a lot of us will know, is um, your yellow. I've got two big sections of yellow and two smaller, slightly down, so four sections of yellow. The clarity. That, oh, oh. Oh. Gosh, this is gorgeous. Gems of distinction, strand of sapphire. It's only seen it once before. Wow. If you want luxury, and you want quality. Boy, you've got it here. One of the most sought after gemstones in the world. Present in pretty much every crown jewel uh, over the world. It is a gemstone which we, well, we just never miss it really. We never, we never underestimate sapphire, do we? You always think prestige, you always think high end, don't you? You never underestimate Sapphire. I, I'll be straight with you. When I first you know, found Jewelry Maker and everything, I thought, <laughs> how do people buy Sapphire? How do people buy Sapphire and make things out of Sapphire? To me, Sapphire with diamonds would be the ones that, yeah, Tiffany will, can work with it. Yeah, Chanel can work with it. Of course they can, Dior can work with Sapphire. But surely not the average person, that's just not something you could go and buy. It's uh, you know, the, one of the rarest things on the planet. I was wrong, obviously, <laughs> because you can. Hello, gorgeous Natalia. You're my little Sapphire. How's your day going today, Natalia? Oh, really well. Is it going well? Are they good? Can you bring me one of the pendants, please? Oh my God, love Natalia. Do you know what else I love? Can we have a look back at the workshop? She's matched herself to the tablecloth today. Look at that, and she, I love that. There are the lovely ladies. She's gonna bring us a pendant in. Now that is obviously the metal clay workshop. When you're working with 99.9% .9 silver, like a lot of you will at home, what would be better to pair it with than sapphire of this quality? It's exceptional. Your price point today is exceptional too. It's prestigious. It's known for be regal and royal. Your price today is just £44.95. 15 carats worth of this little beauty today. That is astonishing. And truly, when you've got this quality and you've got this high end, you could easily be pairing this with your high end luxury silver 99.9%. .9 Come here, Natalia. Come on in. Camera. I'm not yeah. camera ready. You are. Well, you're gorgeous. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm very bright. Don't you are. Oh, we've just been woken up. I was standing <gasps> How? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is beautiful. That is one of my ladies from my workshop today. No way. And she's never picked up silver clay before, and she made that. Isn't that gorgeous? No way. She's never worked with metal with silver clay before. Never. And she's managed to create that. I'm so proud of her. Yeah. Imagine. Because I'm thinking, when you're working with metal silver clay like this, you want high end sapphires. Of you do. Yes. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? It's cool. Isn't that amazing? Well, I love that. Don't look bring cool. me over here looking at gorgeous gems. <laughs> I have to go Stop away. Stop it, I have to do things. <laughs> that is stunning. When is your next? Have you got another metal have, clay or anything else coming up? I have. Um, every month we've got um, silver clay workshops of some kind. And, wow. Um, you'll have to get the gallery to tell you the exact dates. But we've got um, gemstone setting in silver clay tomorrow. Oh and my gosh, yes. The book at last is month. there? Yeah. Truly, truly. Yeah. So if you can get to Reddit, for tomorrow, <laughs> um, prong setting with silver clay. Yes. Do you have to have worked with silver clay before? You do have to have a little bit of experience. Bit of knowledge. Yes, yes. You've got to have at least rolled a bit of clay out, but you know, otherwise. Or polymer. What if you've worked with polymer? 
Mm, not metal clay, clay. Metal really. Clay, metal yeah. clay. Metal clay. Stunning. I love that. So get yourself on the phone line. 0800 6 655. Couple of spaces left for that. I love it. Oh, I won't see you tomorrow then. But I'll come and say hello in a bit. See you later, lovely lady. Isn't she gorgeous? Natalia and Gemma Crow, just ridiculously talented and beautiful. It makes you sick, doesn't it? It makes you sick. Uh, £44.95. pence. Gorgeous little Natalia there. Love a lot. Last chance to get your hands on it. Congratulations. Gave you a little sneak peek of this earlier, didn't I? This was to uh, show you off that beautiful elongated bus that you had the opportunity to buy. Is it that price? Under fifteen pounds for Moonstone. That is this huge. Look at the size of it. Look at the facets on there. Do you like these, Gemma Crow? Because you're looking over. I do. I do. So um, quite bright, actually, aren't they? Yeah, very bridal. In fact, it's a quite a common um, stone to put in my bridal pieces. And why is so when you get commissioned to do pieces? Why is that? Why do people? Well, it's not because people request it necessarily because they haven't seen it before. But when you consult, when you go and do a consultation, you take your selection of gems. I always take rainbow moonstone or moonstone with me, and do it's you? almost always selected. Maybe because I love it so love much, it so I, more. I push it over, I suppose. But it's always selected. That's amazing, isn't it's it? It's sort of romantic, moonstone. It feels romantic, doesn't it? You're right, it really does. It does, it, it has that feel to it, doesn't it? It's so beautiful. Um, I'm going under £15. I'll be honest, I'm going under £10. <laughs> Your price today for this is just £9.95. Oh, I feel like a princess in that. Nine pounds and ninety-five pence for your moonstone. These are the elongated drops. Look how tan that makes me look. Gotta say, I love that. Uh, Nine ninety-five. Mg, are you ten? A hundred and ten carats worth of this we have. Yeah, did you see that big moon the other day? Did you not? It was pretty. Is it called the super moon? Was it? Did you see it? I did see it. I heard about it on the radio the next day. Oh, that's of. useless, isn't it? That's <laughs> never helpful. That is it. I, I knew it was happening. I had a little look online. I knew it was happening. I, I saw it at night and it was. It's huge, wasn't it? It's going to be like, it's going to be larger than average for a while. It's like 16% closer to the earth, isn't oh, it? Is it? Oh, so it stay that much yeah, closer so for a little bit? It's going to take a little while to, for us to rotate enough for it to be further away again. So it's still really big, but that was the biggest it's ever going to be. Biggest. Yeah, it was massive. Wow. It was really, really pretty huge. Look, it's just. just that big. <laughs> uh, 9.95. Get your own super moonstone for just 9.95. Terrible. <laughs> okay. Now, I've got Oh, thanks for me water pee. Hang on. Mm. Didn't see that there. I had to wet me whistle. Oh, turquoise. Yes. Yay. Turquoise in a bundle. Let's just focus on this turquoise for a start, shall we? Gorgeous that we've got here. You've got beautiful colours. Oh. It's your turquoise coloured magnesite. Blue magnesite is 280 carats worth. I thought it was reconstituted turquoise. It looks like it, doesn't it? Be honest. It does, doesn't it? Looks just like it. Um, this is 280 carats worth of your blue magnesite, turquoise coloured magnesite, let's be honest. Uh, you've also got 50 carats worth on the rice beads. These are 14 by 5 mil that we've got there. And these are 10 by 7 on the plain rondelles. As well as that, oh, I love these peridot uh, queens. Let me just show you them it's really beautiful this shape I love how the light just pings from them Ping! oh just as I said ping Gemma Corey pinged something across the room that was weird what are you pinging <laughs> it's just a bead mm, pinky bead jumped away jump around look at this no I want to save that 
Oh, you've then got this clear quartz, which is just the clearest of clear. Used to be believed that clear quartz was actually um, ice sent from the gods that never melted. And you can see why they think that, wouldn't you? Because look how clear that is. Look at how the light is just its glowing, isn't it? It really is a glowing gemstone. Uh, 45 carats worth we have here of that most exquisite, exquisite quartz. Uh, by cones, plain by cones, these are from around 4 by 2 to 5 by 3. And lastly, but by no means leastly. Have you ever seen pyrite look like this? Ever? Have you? I love that. That is gorgeous, isn't it? It is really lovely. Normally when I think pyrite, I'm thinking like really unusual shapes. You get quite a few like twisted queen oval things like that, don't you? Um, or I'm thinking plain rounds, but I'm thinking the big, huge, massive ones. I'm not thinking these gorgeous little golden 65 carats worth ones. I'm sizing on these three to four mil. Oh my gosh, imagine these on a bead loom piece. Oof. Very nice. They're beautiful. I absolutely love pyrite. Uh, yeah, I do. And it adds so much weight as well. Yeah, it does. So, it? you know, rather than a spacer bead, if you're using some something light, and they can, metal spacer beads can be quite light too. So that they're ideal to add weight to something and but have a spacer bead. Mm -hmm. And it is, isn't it? Weight is quality. That's why people weigh down their pieces. That's why yesterday with the friendly plastic, um, lovely Liz was saying, I often weigh it down, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's why when we did the jewel enamel yesterday, she said, I often weigh it down by blah, blah, blah. Debbie B always w often weighs down her uh, polymer because weight makes you think expensive, really. And that's what pyrite does because it's so, so heavy for, uh, for, its, uh, for its size because it has that metallic uh, feel to it, essentially. Um, EBGC90, fun in the sun. Price, should be. £18, 75 pence, yep, I can see that. Because magnesite we don't actually have on that often anymore, do we? We used to, a while back, but we don't have much of it on anymore. Um, the pyrite itself, like I said, I've never seen anything like it personally myself. I'm so excited. Uh, you've got gorgeous peridot, one of Spellbinding's absolute faves. And then you've got just the beautifully rest on your eye clear quartz. I'm not staying there though. Oh no, my friends. Your price today for a bit of fun in the sun is just 12 pounds and 95 pence for you on this today. Five strands, 12.95. Wowzers! That's working out, what, just, uh, just over two pounds. Two pounds 59 a strand, and that's it. Genuine gemstones for that price. That is astonishing, isn't it? It truly, truly is. £12.95. I absolutely love this. Gemma Crow, um, if I was to work all this together, yes. what would I make? Uh, something very tropical. It looks super tropical. Yeah, it looks very tropical, doesn't it? Um, multi layers, but perhaps um, on chain. So, multi layers of. Uh, rosary links rather than putting them all solid uh, solid strands together I'd more space them out yeah but layered bangles just memory wire would be nice love that would be nice that is gorgeous isn't it I love that idea the people in the gallery have fallen into this so much they are they're discussing tropical and then they're like Totally tropical. Oh, that reminds me of Lilt, other other drinks are available. That reminds me of Umbongo, and now they're all trying to sing <laughs> Umbongo. It goes Umbongo, Umbongo, they drink it in the Congo. The panther, pick the passion fruits. The leopard, pick the mango. <laughs> Amazing! 
<laughs> I know the whole song. I won't, do not worry, I won't put you through that. Um, £12.95 for these five strands today. It's stunning, isn't it? <laughs> it is so amazing. Now they're doing indie glam impressions of the Kiora bird. <laughs> Ryan can do the Kiora bird walk. Oh my god, I've never loved my director so much. Please come and do it. <laughs> do it later, do it later. £12.95, fun in the sun. Loads of you getting that. Congrats, ladies and gents. Probably because you're getting yourself a real bargain. Um, and I've got multi buyers on that. You're getting yourself a real bargain, but a gorgeous selection. Teddy bear in Texas has just popped them in a basket. Do check out that basket as well. There's a good sort of <laughs> five or six of you. Teddy bear, I haven't just made that up. Yeah, it's there in front of me. Um, <laughs> it really is. Oh, put that back up for me. <laughs> Ben's just moving so you could see teddy bear on there. Teddy bear in Texas. Have you ever been in Texas? No, me neither. No. Have you? Have you been Texas? How long has it been Texas? Mm, Produced how long? And um, purple faceted druzy. These are the the this is the strand or it might have been slightly different. I'm pretty sure it wasn't that I brought to you in the first show I did in November, or at least the first or the second show I did in November. I remember seeing it and just thinking, what is this mystical? being what is this amazing i've never seen anything like this in my life i'm so glad that it's back so we sold out so quickly on that uh, we've been getting the circular recently we've been getting the coins recently but the to me originals are back it's your beautiful purple druzy quartz oh wow isn't that delicious isn't it wonderful? Look at the sparkle on these. Statement pieces, big style with this. You could do beautiful bib pieces, you could do bracelet bangle pieces on this. It is so sparkly. And then look at the colours. Look at the gorgeous colours, the purples, the pinks, the golds on it. Oh, every single one will look different and unique, of course. Every single one. But look at them. Oh. 200 carats worth we have here. You're going to be getting around five pieces. I think it is five pieces because every time I see with this strand, it's five pieces. But obviously, they may be different sizes. You're going to be working out around 26 by 19 to 36 by 30 mil. Your price today, 200 carats of purple jersey, £12.95. You can do statement, you can do bold, you could use all five of these in one piece in a bib style, which was done uh, you know, a while ago. But you can use them one by one, you can use them individually. £12.95, why not treat yourself to some today? DYGP76, that's your code. Get it whilst you can. Gorgeous. I've got a few things to, to squeeze in. Go on. Oh my gosh, I forgot I haven't even done this one yet. <sighs> Do you? Oh my god. Oh, oh no, it's trying to stow itself away in my dress. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. That is stunning. Truly. It uh, isn't it amazing? Yeah, really, truly stunning. Now, I understand that that looks jet to you at home, but it's not. Clarity is astonishing. Look at that recording. In fact, just whilst you're showing that recording, let me show you how clear this is, because it's really hard to put across on screen. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Awesome. Really rich, smoky brown, isn't it? It's Lovely. gorgeous, isn't it? This is astonishing because you've got serious clarity to this with an intense smoke of that smoky quartz. Oh my lord. Brand spanking new today. Right here 
right now. Well done to people who are already allocating it. Price point on this. Oh, I think that's good. We're working out around the £25 mark. What do you think of that, Jericho? I think it's brilliant. I think, I think actually whatever price tag you put on that, it was worth it. You know, if you put £35, £40 on it, I think it's worth it. Yeah. Really seriously beautiful. I'm absolutely blown away by it. And for me to be out of words, it doesn't happen that often. Um, but this has done that to me. It's the best smoky quartz I've ever seen. And there's nothing else for me to really say. I don't think I need to. You can see the quality. You can see the beauty. Genuinely, the way that the light works in the studio is it will hit the gemstone, it bounces back to you. It's great for showing luster. It's not great for showing clarity because it's one directional light, basically. Um, just trust me on this. I brought this over to you when we were showing that VT. The, mm. the clarity is... It, yeah, there is a lot of clarity in there, considering the depth of colour. Yeah. The clarity is phenomenal because you usually can't, you know, sacrifice one for the other but not in that strand yes you're right it is astonishing look at the size let's do it let me just even just from there you can see scale can't you look at that sparkle from there the cameras are a good sort of seven foot away from me and the lights in here are nightmarish look at that sparkle this is going to go with anything isn't it really you've got your pendant pieces here you've got your earrings as well these are brand new, your elongated drops. $24.95, what do you think of that, Jabba Crow? I think, it's a, I think that's a bargain. Do you? I genuinely think that's a bargain. They are superb. Look how chuffed you are. Look, look, look how happy you are. You're really surprised at me, like, they are. $24.95. They're, they're beautiful. You buy it at $24.95, everyone else can buy it for this price. <laughs> Your price today isn't twenty four ninety five. It's nineteen pounds and ninety five pence. What do you think of it now, Gemma? I think I'd have two. Would you actually? Genuinely? Yeah, genuinely. Because I, I would actually. When you put that to your neckline, I thought I want that. Yeah. So I'd have to have one for me, I think. Yeah. And then, then probably I'd have to make one for somebody else if I wore <laughs> it. <laughs> so get two just to be safe. Yes. Yeah. I can't get over these serious, sparkle, beautiful clarity and intense smokiness. And the thing is, beauty in the eye of the beholder, but when it comes to smoky quartz, it's readily regarded that the deeper the smoke, the more expensive the gem in smoky quartz. And look how smoky this is. It's so smoky, it almost looks jet to you. It's not, because when you get it home, you see it in real light, not these crazy lights in here. You will see the clarity in this is just astonishing. Your names are just going off my screen now. Well done, Louise. Well done, Martin. Carol. Suze. Oh, Suze. What a beautiful name. Valerie. It's got itself one. Andrea. Uh, Susan. Tracy. Margaret. Lorna. Patricia. Anne. All of you are getting yourself. I'm sorry, I can't read the rest of your names out because you've just gone off my screen. But congratulations to everyone who has got your hands on this. All of those people, make sure you're checking out your baskets. Everybody, if you can get it, get it now for £20 less than. I think that's amazing. Brand spanking new strand. So that's me again. Sorry, lovely lady. I told you I had three new strands of gemstones in today. You know I wouldn't let you down. Here's my third. Droplets droplets of luxury and beauty befall you in this strand oh wow oh my gosh brand new strand 110 carats of blue topaz it's got a really sort of oniric feel to it hasn't it do you know what i mean is that just me? Gorgeous, gorgeous, dreamlike feel. Now it's topaz. And I always say, I know it's not one of the big four, but I would put it up there. If there was a table, like a pyramid, and at the top of the pyramid was the big four, the layer underneath, that would be topaz. Because it's a gemstone that everyone knows. When you grow up, 
you will know and you will hear about from a very, very young age, diamonds, sapphires, emeralds, topaz. That's just the way it is. I don't know why it's that way. Maybe it's because it's one of the most popular gemstones in the world. Maybe it's a gemstone that's been used for thousands and thousands and thousands upon millennia of years. Maybe it's just the fact that everyone loves it, wants it, and, and knows the general price tag for it. Whatever the reason, it's very much in the public subconscious. It's very much a gemstone that is known by the, the community, by the world for, for m numerous reasons. This is a brand new strand and these are your elongated pairs that we have here. Really sensational quality of topaz. When I think topaz, when I think blue topaz, I think the Tiffany Blue book. Because this has been seen time and time and time again in that book which of course, I'm sure a lot of us will know the Tiffany Blue Book is a book that is released by Tiffany & Co every year that highlights the biggest gemstones in the world, in the fashion industry for that year. And Blue Topaz is, I think it's been in there maybe, maybe even every year, you know, since it began, maybe. It's a high-end gemstone, it truly is. Three words, Gemma Crow, for topaz. Let's go. Okay. Um, majestic, rich, and... Majestic, rich, and... Classy? Mm. So why, okay. why majestic? I don't know. So that's a good one. It does, because it, it does feel, all the topaz feels like that. I don't know, it feels, you know, magisterial or something, it definitely, I don't know, it feels powerful. I should have had that as a word, it's a powerful stone, I think. I know what you mean. There's certain gemstones and there's certain pieces, and it's different for every individual, that when you are in the presence of it, mm. it's, this sounds completely over the top or completely enough, but it's absolutely true. When you're in the presence of it, you feel enveloped with like energy and, and just positivity or whatever it might be for yeah. yours. So for me, it's opal, that happens time and time again. As soon as I'm near opal, I just you know fall in love time and time again with it. Yeah. Is that how you sort of feel with this? I think, I think yeah, I, if I get it to work with, there's always a level of excitement that sort of comes into play in my work. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Blue topaz, when you think of topaz, what price point are you thinking? Well, I know when it's used by Tiffany, of course, you're obviously gonna be thinking thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Even for a simple pair of earrings and blue topaz, you'd be thinking just a pair of earrings, 100 pounds, easy peasy. Uh, today though, for this massive brand new strand, you're paying a tiny 17 pounds and 95 pence. Oh, my director Ryan just said. I know, that is astonishing, isn't it? HR, are you 50? There you go, 17.95. Get your hands on it whilst you can. It's absolutely astonishing, gorgeous quality. Beautiful, beautiful, brand new strand. Well done everyone who's getting your hands on that today. It's absolutely exceptional. Ooh got a few more to squeeze in so I'm gonna to have to move on stay on those phone lines though for that one Ooh, what's our price on this stunner under 10 pounds love this uh, 65 carats worth of your labradorite only seen once before uh, this is your graduated faceted labradorite beautiful it's gonna be under 10 pounds if you want to get yourself a bargain if maybe you spent out yesterday on the Jewel and Animal show, maybe you've uh, treated yourself to both of the kits today, or well, I was sell out say, maybe you treated yourself to that new tool, don't forget, sort of five minutes or so, don't go anywhere, because we're going to be having a little look at Gemma Crow's um, makes and what she did with that brand new tool. So stay where you are, last chance to own that as well, because over half my stock went of that. Oh, no, crazy. Um, so do stay exactly where you are. This is 65 carats worth that we have here of the beautiful Labradorite. If you have been buying that new um, tool, if you bought that brand new hammer, if you bought all three of the new strands and you got both of our kits today, you're thinking, oh, I've spent quite a lot. 
Well, then this could be one to add to your basket because it's under £10, so it would be rude not to. Your price today is just £7.95. £7.95. Genuine gemstone, not treated, not filled with anything, not coated, not heated. It's not been irradiated and locked in a closet somewhere. Not a closet, obviously, but locked away for a long time. No, not at all. Natural, Mother Nature. We've taken it, we've shaped it, we've fastened it, we've drilled through it, stranded it, it's yours. £7.95. Gosh, there's lots of you coming in for this. I think a lot of you are agreeing with me, aren't you? Yes. I spent a lot today. £7.95, yeah, I can do that. It's like, it's like when you're, um, yeah, good idea. Squeeze one more in like that. Um, it's like when you're at the shops, isn't it? And you're like, oh, look at all this. You've done the big shop. And then you're near that bit near the till. And they like, have things on there just to tempt you. You don't even need them. They weren't even on your list. You didn't plan to get them. No one needs Percy pigs, do they? They're gorgeous. But nobody needs a Percy pig. But you get it anyway because they're a bargain and they look pretty cool. That's what this is. Seven pounds and ninety-five pence for you on this today. <gasps> yes! I didn't know we had this in. Pearls! I have got the most beautiful, the number one organic of the year in one of the number one colours forever. It is your turquoise coloured cultured pearls. Oh my god genuine pearls oh my gosh don't they look round they're not they're seven by six but don't they <gasps> if you've got turquoise or you got that kit with the magnesite before oh stunning oh i know i know i know oh oh don't want to show off but i know that brand new rose quartz i did oh all that concave are there some still available on that new strand wow what what appetite. what should we try it with now oh and the road and the smoky quartz or the appetite oh the smoky quartz oh, oh. Or both smoky quartz oh yeah of course oh yeah obviously and which appetite you know the drops we had that's a possibility i think oh yeah oh yeah they've moved but yeah hey what about the blue topaz yes oh yeah i like that combination actually all three all together all three all together Ooh. yeah now, we know that pearls are going, going, gone. We know that already. We know that we are hardly able to get our hands on any at all. Have you noticed recently um, that the number of shell pearls we're doing is going up, whereas the number of actual pearls is going down? It's because we can't get our hands on them. Yields have gone down, prices have gone up so much. We can't get ourselves any for December or November. We just haven't been able to buy any new ones at this point yet. Um, when Hannah O and Paula went to Hong Kong, they were absolutely gobsmacked at the prices and basically just refused to pay it because the prices are astronomical now. They really are. If you love the genuine real deal, if you want to stay ahead of that fashion curb, now's your opportunity. It's turquoise cultured pearls for just £11.95 for you today. RZPO72, that's your code. Stay exactly where you are on those phone lines. We'll be with you. £11.95. We think ageless, we think timeless, we think fun and young and funky as well, though. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous juxtaposition that pearls like this offer you. £11.95 for you on that today. Now I'm heading over to you, Jim. That's all right, love. Mm -hmm. All right, love. I went proper northern then, didn't I? And normally I hardly sound northern at all. I'm off at north tomorrow. <laughs> are you? Where are you going yes. on that? I'm going to Yorkshire tomorrow. Yorkshire. Then I'm going to Durham on Saturday to meet a fabulous group of ladies. Oh, lovely. Yes. And then I'm going to Blackpool. Oh, you'll be looked after well in Blackpool. Well, Have I, you been Blackpool before? When I was little. I'm taking Tom to do all the fair stuff. Oh my gosh, Pleasure Beach is amazing. Yeah, we got our tickets. Oh, fab. Oh, my gosh, you're yeah. going to have so much fun. Yeah, Ooh. can't wait. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Gemma Crow. On tour. <laughs> On tour. <laughs> you have had so much fun with this. Yeah, I'm, I didn't get a chance to do much, but it just shows it's so simple. Just use the biggest punch. I love that. 
Just the biggest you've used here, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I've only used that biggest one. I didn't have much time to do it. This is the brand new tool that we sold hundreds of earlier on. I've got the last few of them available for you now. If you missed how to use it, that we did a demo in the first 20 minutes of the show. So either wait and watch the late show, wait until the end of it, and then mm. our show will start back up and you'll be about 20 minutes in, or just watch it back on YouTube if you wish. About 20 minutes in, we did a detailed yes, demo of exactly how to use it. Yeah. But very long story short, we'll talk you through it again really quickly. These individual sections come out, they do different size discs, so you've got your half inch, your quarter inch, etc. Et in there, they come out. All you do is through the little mouth here, you pop in your metal, whether it be uh, the raw copper we had on today or whether it be your aluminium. Oh, you're so clever. You are so <laughs> smart. <laughs> there you go. That is about the fourth <laughs> time that I have done that. It's about the fourth time I tried to show you that gap and they've all fallen out. Oh, <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, yes. Just turn it. <laughs> Oh yes, how clever. Um, so you have got uh, the, you pop your metal, <laughs> your raw colour copper or your aluminium whatever in here and then through this section, pop them in on the flat side, flat si no, on the dome side, your hammer, Yeah. it cuts it. through it, perfect disc and you can create these looks. Mm -hmm. How do we do these German Crow? So basically there's a, just um, I punched all the circles and I left these I left um, I spaced the circles out on the sheet first which meant that when I cut around the circles I had pendants left Clever. so it's like sequins and sequin waste you know if you if you plan it properly you can have pendants from the waste I love so that yeah, it's, it's worth but I've got loads of ideas swimming around for it so I'm hoping I can take it home and prepare some more DIs with that tool. Because this tool, we were saying, absolute complete bargain. Gemma Crow got herself one a while ago. Instead of seven size holes, there was just four, and she paid £39.99 pence with £10 postage. That's right. The cheapest one of the exact same mate we found today. We did a live, live price comparison. The cheapest we found of exactly the same brand and size and everything on the website cheapest 31 pounds was the mm. cheapest that was the cheapest we could find of exactly the I same bet the product. postage was pretty high as well and that's not in count in the including the postage <laughs> as well I'm, I'm pretty sure that would be considerable anywhere else that postage absolutely 295 yeah. don't forget until midnight tonight so this is from the waist the yeah. cut out section yeah and you've just dangled your gemstone here. So this is like we were talking about before when you have that laser mesh, it's that kind of feel, isn't yeah. it? And you've just ever so delicately textured that. What have you textured that with? Literally with the ball, because I didn't get time to sand it or anything. I used the ballpoint end of the hammer just to texture right around the edge, just to give it a frilly edge. Um, and that's it, yeah. No, no patina or anything on there. I didn't, didn't get that far. You could have though, couldn't you? Obviously. Yeah, you could definitely patina it. Well, you take some time to sand the edges if you're going to use it in jewellery, but... And then matching pair of earrings. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Add this wonderful tool to your kit. We've already sold hundreds of them. There's plenty more if you're still coming in. Do check out those baskets. Last opportunity to get them now. And why not add a few extra goodies to your basket today? Because there's the uh, scale mail, isn't it? On the website. Offer on the website ends at midnight tomorrow. So get your extra goodies in there now. Um, Gemma Crow, you are an absolute legend. When are you back with us, love? Uh, next Friday, I think. Yeah, okay, a week. Next Friday. A week Friday. Friday, I think. Roughly then, anyway. Roughly. Uh, so, Gemma, we'll see you then. I'll see you after I've been drowned in a festival. Uh, why clearance continues! <laughs> Jewelry Maker are having a web exclusive clearance on our scale mail stock. Head over to the website now and grab yourself a bargain. Offer ends at midnight on Friday the 15th. Hi Jewelry Makers, if you're a Freeview viewer, you can now continue to watch the show live by switching over to channel 64. Our brand new 